We just saw Deadpool and Wolverine, and we're gonna watch a breakdown and get every Easter egg cameo and detail we missed. YouTube, spoiler alert. If you don't want spoilers, leave. Lay off the fence, kids. Welcome back to New Rockstars. I'm Eric Voss, and this is a breakdown of every Easter egg in detail you missed in Deadpool and Wolverine. The 2016 Deadpool film was the first Marvel movie I broke down on YouTube, and this year I wow. made it my mission to rewatch all of the X Men movies that I grew up with to learn everything man. I could about this film and everything that paved the road to it. And it was all for this moment so that I could be the sharpest expert I could be as I break okay. down Deadpool and Wolverine okay, shot okay. by shot, all the big cameos and references and inside jokes, but also just the really subtle details and super layered wordplay that make this movie special. Guys, we are so back and we need to savor every little yeah. morsel. Let's A lot of details. Off. And by the way, uh, I'm wearing our Deadpool videos Wolverine inspired normally base off shirt and grabbing one of these at nerdriot.shop will be the best way to support kind of hard. Okay, we open with an updated Marvel Studios uh, title. What was it? I came out of my daddy. I came on my daddy fast. No, I came on my daddy balls fast. And I came on my mama pussy fast. So that boy Remy LeBeau, I'm really going fast. <laughs> <laughs> Logo, Steve Rogers hurled oh, we didn't see this part. Oh, we missed this now as he's Aaron from wanted Clizzy from the 2016 Deadpool film right after Angel Dust punched Colossus past Deadpool in that final battle in the scrapyard so not only does it look like Deadpool is like dodging Cap Shield or just watching it go by his head so impressed setting up his salute to Steve Rogers followed by getting Chris Evans Johnny Storm killed in this movie Ryan Reynolds that was also great. leading this movie that, by speaking in a Gina Carano hero moment as he is joining the Disney universe after that same company fired her from the Mandalorian and she's now suing them that's fun Damn. Damn. Of the A in the Marvel logo is now Carol, Monica, and Kamala from the Marvels. And as the word pulls away from us, the M now contains the shot of Deadpool, Deadpool. beckoning Logan oh. from the back of the Honda Odyssey in this movie. We also hear Deadpool humming along with Michael Shakino's theme music as the red backdrop turns into the texture of Deadpool's suit, and Marvel and mm -hmm. studios turn red and yellow to match this movie's title. Deadpool giggles. Okay. <laughs> it's a lot of details to catch in a movie theater. And also. Where is he going? How is he going back to read? Never mind. I know the answer. He, he, oh boy. I, no, he, I know the answer. Pirate, oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right. All right. Never mind. The music just gets you pumped. The opening scene shows Deadpool in the snowy forest of North Dakota near the Canadian border, Logan's gravesite from the 2017 Logan film. We broke down that movie here, and we recapped everything you need to know about Marvel's full history here in this video. Okay. But just to summarize, I watched that, that movie, Wolverine, in the main Fox X Men universe of Earth 10005, in a story set five years or so after what seemed to be the happy ending of X Men Days of Future Past, struggled in a depressing mm -hmm. near future mm -hmm. where the X Men were dead from one of Professor Xavier's psionic seizures, and mutants had been eradicated from toxins in the food supply. Logan had to escort his clone, X-23, oh, Laura, rough. played by the young Daphne Keen, from El Paso to the Canadian border to join a group of young mutant runaways, all bred from the DNA of past mutants like him. Logan has to fight an adult clone of himself, called X-24, and he gets impaled on a tree branch, where he <clears> finally <throat> bled out and died. The kids- Damn. The craziest thing about X-24 um, in the comics, or one rendition of the comics, X-24 is his son. X-23 is his daughter, and X-24 is his son. So I, I wish they could have made X-24. I get doing the Logan clone thing, uh -huh. but if they could have presented X-24 as he is in the comics, his variation of Logan's power is really cool. So how Logan has the three claws, he has extra claws that come out of his arms. Oh, that'd be oh. cool. And he is a demon. He's so cool. He's so okay, cool. okay, 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 okay. It's buried him at this gravesite, and Laura turned the cross to form an X. Hugh Jackman announced mm. at that point that he was retiring playing the role, and audiences accepted this as a fitting farewell, arguably the best of the X-Men franchise and one of Thought the best of all time. And when Ryan Reynolds announced this film in 2022, he and Hugh Jackman promised that they wouldn't touch the events of the 2017 Logan film. But here he says, for a long time, I wasn't sure if I'd ever be back. Disney bought Fox. There was a whole boring rights issue, okay, blah, yeah, blah, blah, yeah. blah. But then it turned out they wanted me. The one guy who shouldn't even have his own movie, much less a franchise. <laughs> Marvel's so stupid. Deadpool is, of course, referring to Disney's buyout of Fox's film and TV properties in 2019. Yep. Originally, Marvel. And that's uh, what I, that's yeah. what I was saying. Like that's that's it the closing end, that chapter of. Yeah, yeah, at the end, the reason they show all the movies the end look, credit. Yeah, it's yeah. because at this point, this is the complete end of the Fox cinematic universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. from this point on, it's Marvel because now they re own the rights. Yeah. yeah. Marvel had sold the film rights for the X-Men and Fantastic Four, Daredevil and Electra movie. and a few other characters mm -hmm. to Fox in the late 90s. And that's why the Fox X-Men films and Deadpool occupied the separate cinematic universe than Kevin Feige's Marvel Cinematic Universe, which has been owned by Disney ever since 2009. Fox was worried after their failed 2015 Fantastic Four reboot and the has been owned by Disney ever since 2009. Fox was worried. Why they animate rock ass? That's a, it, <laughs> he got a boy. He got a butt crack. <laughs> and it, it was so quick. Crack, 
It was so quick, I thought I was tweaking. Oh my I God. thought it was just cracks in the skin. That's actual <laughs> rock booty. Freed after their Electrophon failed 2015 fantastic yeah. reboot and the declining popularity of the X-Men franchise. She looked like old girl from the boys. Is that her? Who? Who? Fox was worried after their failed 2015. That is her! That is That's her! her! She was Susan Storm? What the fuck? I never watched this because I was like, I, yeah, I didn't watch Yeah, it. I didn't watch the shit either. Yeah, okay, all right. 15 Fantastic Four reboot and the declining popularity of the X-Men franchise after the departure of Hugh Jackman and issues with, like, Brian Singer on 2016's X-Men Apocalypse film. In fact, many terrible. believe that Singer would have to be credited as a producer on any live-action X-Men film thereafter, and that still might be a case for a time, which is maybe why this has taken so long. So Rupert Murdoch really had to leverage the popularity of Deadpool and Disney's interest in archived TV content for the launch of Disney+, uh -huh. Plus to juice up the deal to $71.3 billion. Yeah. Other than cameos by Patrick Stewart, Charles Xavier, Ooh. and Multiverse of Madness, and Kelsey Grammer as Beast in the Marvels, Deadpool and Wolverine is the first of these Fox properties to get its... What you thinking, what you... twin? What you on about in there? You... Whoa, 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 whoa. If Beast was in the Marvels. Wait, if Beast was in the Marvels, the X-Men already exist in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I thought that was I thought that was already a thing. No. We haven't the, the mutants have never been presented. Mutants have never been presented in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That was... I thought... If, if Beast is in the... I get it's been a thing, but it's never been present. If And the reason why that's so important is because if Henry McCoy... If Henry McCoy was in the Marvel... It's a different timeline. That's yo, I'm so intrigued. I'm so intrigued. Boy, they, they take it full advantage of this multiverse yeah. timeline stuff. And I, I think at this point, I think at this point, uh, they this. I really want to know how they go because they're gotten rid of Kang. Kang's no longer. Yeah, Kang is no longer a thing. Anything. So I'm, I'm really interested how they go. So forward. I wonder. It's okay. So when they bring back RDJ, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's not. It can't be on the same timeline. No. 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 He's no. gonna be. He has to be a variant. He has to be. Okay. Mm. Own film under the Marvel Studios banner, and it reunites Kevin Feige with Hugh Jackman, who met on the set of the first Fox X Men film, where Feige got his start as an associate producer. So Deadpool continues. Look, we know the title of this thing, so I bet you're wondering how are we going to do this without dishonoring Logan's memory? I'll tell you how. We're not, and we are back to the same grave as Deadpool literally digs up Logan's corpse. Of course he does this. The final scenes in Logan near the base <laughs> were actually filmed at the remote Corkins Lodge in northern New Mexico near Chama. It looks like they recreated these woods, maybe on a backlot set, and used VFX to recreate the same mountainous background. But yeah, they even yeah. included the same felt tree that Wolverine died on and the reaver truck that Richter overturned with an earthquake. We hear the platters 1959 only you as Deadpool flings dirt past it. And I love I like the music. Me, yeah, yeah. It was bro, a the music. It bro. was a great the music. It was like, bro, it's like he pulled everything out of my phone, bro. It's like every song. I don't want the world to hang me because I don't want you to understand. I mean, bro, the music Later, was Deadpool phenomenal. On a TV I gotta download Deadpool's that song. shovel clanks on metal, of course, adamantium, and he angrily hacks away at the remains. But Deadpool calms down and sits beside Logan's adamantium-covered <laughs> skeleton, leaning against the same tree where Logan was impaled while all other tissue has decayed. The adamantium yeah. has kept it all intact, like a liquid metal cast of an ant colony. It's kind of a cursed existence for these remains. Even in death, Logan could not escape the adamantium. So arguably, by dismantling the bones into these weapons, Deadpool is kind of scattering the bones. Yeah, that boy was arguably. Deadpool the, the, fun, the chaos, the residuals, and then he puppets Logan's skull. I might. There's nothing that will bring me back to life faster than a big old bag of Marvel cash. It recalls the opening words of the 2016 Deadpool movie when Deadpool was seated on the overpass and invoked Hugh Jackman in a similar way. It does rhyme with Pulverine. And let me tell you, he's got a nice pair of smooth criminals down under. TVA time doors open up and the lead agent calls out, Wade Winston Wilson, you are under arrest for crimes against the Time Variance Authority. Yes, he uses his full name from the comics, including the middle name of Winston, which oh, makes okay. his initials WWW. The TVA uniforms in this movie have changed from the Hunter uniforms we saw yeah. in the Loki series. In the Loki series, the pants and shirts included Harlequin patterns of black and burnt orange. They never cover their face. Are these fools just regular people? I, they got, yes. bro. Yes. Why are they using regular people, people to, to keep go. heroes well, so, and to so. keep super powered people in check? Because their weapons can no the fuck they well, did. No, they their weapons can uh, effectively stop them. It's just well yeah because they did send them to the void. It's just them. It's just you them find niggas, niggas that's suck, better yeah. than you. Like superior. You just way gotta more get lucky. Superior. But they like, gotta get lucky. 
They gotta get lucky. Very much so. Like, oh my God, okay, whatever. Mikey, this is what stop and their armor wasn't blazoned clapping. with the TVA logo and their hunter ID numbers, but there are no numbers on the hunters in this movie, which is a clue that points to Paradox's division being off the books in the TVA, okay. a kind of black ops that he oh. personally oversees, oh. where the cops hide their badge numbers and conceal their identities. Deadpool raises his hand from behind the tree, shouting, wait! A call back to him doing this from behind the SVB on the freeway oh, yeah. in the 2016 yeah. movie, which led to the 12 bullet countdown sequence. This movie heightens that with Wolverine's bones, as Wade promises not to use any of his weapons, but then tells us there are 206 bones in the human body. 207 if I'm watching Gossip Girl. This is Ryan Reynolds <laughs> shouting out his wife, Blake Lively, who starred in Gossip Girl and can't oh, be oh, movie later on as Lady oh. Deadpool. Deadpool tells Wolverine oh, hey, hey, Bro, when Shawnee popped up on the screen. That nigga simple I said, I said, damn. He said, damn, before anything bro, showed. Bro, she was on the I saw the the, the 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 hip from right here and that was a damn. No, you said damn when it was way at the Yo, bottom. It was not way at bro, the bottom. Bro, 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 I was like, that's why we it. had it. It, I, it was I, I barely it was, need, it was here, bro. It was now. barely need. That's why I asked oh, you. I was oh, like, oh, we ain't even seen the hips or nothing. Bro, bro and you can see the, bro, the, 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 crazy part, the hip go back. The crazy part when she said, "Damn, this is how crazy it was." I was, I was like, "Wait!" I man. literally said it, and then when she said, "I saw hips," it was just getting up. I'm like, I was like, "All right, whatever." Oh, yeah. let me know. <laughs> hey, you know when the thighs is when the knees is, is, is shit. You know the thighs is gonna match. Bro. Okay, Peanut, I guess we are getting a team up after all. Peanut is Deadpool's recurring nickname for Wolverine in this movie, and it's also what Scott Lang calls his daughter Cassie. The opening credits are set to "In Sync's Bye Bye Bye," and Deadpool yeah. even does yeah. the exact choreography from the music video. Each of the oh, film credits are. That, that shit was hilarious. What the pirates? The pirates? Yeah, that was pirates right there. Just not. Oh, the, the <laughs> that was pirates. Arg. And, and 4K, that was pirates. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait. Who's it? In sync's bye awesome. bye bye, and Deadpool even does the exact oh, choreography yeah. from the yeah. music video. Each of the film credits are printed on one of Wolverine's adamantium bones, and one of these bones Deadpool that uses as that 207th bone that he referred to, shoving it in a TVA agent's crotch and sliding his hand down it suggestively. One credit reads Crazy. produced by Kevin Feige and Lauren Schuller Donner. Now, Feige got his start as an assistant to longtime Hollywood producer Lauren Schuller Donner, wife to Superman director Richard Donner. After X Men uh -huh. 2000, Feige left the Donner company to work for Marvel full time as a producer. So, this isn't just a courtesy. Schuller Donner is a legacy producer credited on nearly all X Men and Wolverine movies. Movies because she was that crucial to the character of Wolverine into the franchise. And I just like that oh, movie cool. brought Feige and Schuller Donner back together in the credits. But the red blood on the white snow is just such a contrast to anything we've seen in the MCU before. That's smart, and I think Sean too. Levy might have decided to make it snowing in the scene so that the blood would show up more vibrantly. Deadpool reassembles Wolverine's claws on his forearms, which that must have taken tough. quite a bit of time to do. Like I imagine he would have had to strap one part of it on and be like, oh god shit, and go over and kill a few guys and then go back to strap another part of it on. But it would be so worth it for him to cosplay as Wolverine. Deadpool pauses here to take that us back was hard. The that was hard. Ass. This is a callback to the first edit away from the freeway sequence in the 2016 film, which pushed in on his butt, and the match cut to another butt earlier in Wade's life, which Reynolds and the screenwriters called their ash to ass, referring for a dream transition. The Safdie brothers actually did a similar transition in Uncut Gems, zooming into the precious stone in the opening scene, and then coming out through Adam Sandler's colon. By starting this film Whoa. in the middle of the action, and then flashing back to how we got there, Deadpool in Wolverine's first act uses similar structuring as a 2016 film, which opened on the freeway. Also, question, time out. Hmm. Um, I need y'all to clarify something to make sure I wasn't tripping. What? Uh, you know when they do the how did we get here part? Yeah. And they rewind through everything. Uh-huh. Deadpool gets shot in the head. Okay. One of those scenes is Deadpool getting shot in the head. Yeah, I, hopefully he shows it. Hopefully he shows it. So it's like, you're wondering how I got here. And, and remember it starts showing all the scenes? He said, like, we gotta go back to the beginning. And it shows all the scenes. In one of those scenes, it was Deadpool wearing the same exact shirt. And he got shot in the head. I remember there was. I thought it was from a different Deadpool movie when he got. Shot. But I thought so too. Till he was wearing the same shirt. Ah. Uh, Unless I'm tripping. This is mine. Okay. You want pickles? Yeah. No, I got jalapeno. I thought it was macaroni. Whatever, yeah. W eats, W eats. W eats. W eats. W eats. W fucking eats, man. <clears throat> and then flash back to Wade's days as a mercenary before becoming Deadpool. Here, we rewind time using Cable's time travel wristwatch device from Deadpool 2, reviewing everything Deadpool did in the first two films. Just to recap, he was a mercenary who fell in love with Vanessa. He got cancer. He sought alternative treatments, which led him to Francis, aka Ajax, Sucks. who scarred him, but left him with healing abilities. And then he hunted Francis down. He met Colossus and Negasonic Teenage Warhead. He fought Francis on the scrapyard helicarrier and ended up killing him, right. despite what Colossus begged him not to do. Then in Deadpool 2, he lost Vanessa from assassins. He joined the X-Men, including Yukio, Negasonic Teenage Warhead's new girlfriend, and he helped save the young. Uh -huh. Abused mutant 
Russell from the time traveling assassin Cable, and he formed an X Force and watched most of them die. And then he joined forces with Cable to stop <laughs> Russell from destroying the abusive orphanage, sacrificing himself but using Cable's time travel device to prevent his own death. And then in the post credit sequence, continuing to use the device to save Vanessa, to save Peter and Shatterstar in the X Force, to shoot Ryan mm. Reynolds in the head before making Green Lantern, and then killing his alternate self as Weapon Eleven in 2009's X Men Origins Wolverine. Those last few are what we've rewind back through here as we arrive at March 14th, 2018, Universe oh. 616 Sacred Timeline. It's Pi Day, but this would be right before the snap in the MCU timeline, from, which occurs yeah. in May 2018. The Avengers would still be spread out following the events of Civil War. So at Avengers Compound, generally would be Tony Stark and James Rhodes, Happy Hogan, Pepper Potts, but Steve Rogers and Tasha Romanoff, Sam Wilson would all be fugitives on the run. Bucky would still be in Wakanda. Wanda and Vision would be moving place to place throughout Europe, probably around this time in Edinburgh. Thor and Bruce Banner were off world following the events of Thor Ragnarok. Clint was on his farm with his family in Missouri, and Scott Lang would be under house arrest in San Francisco, and this right now would be soon before the events of Ant-Man the Wasp. So it makes sense that it would be a relative ghost town when Wade Wilson came to visit the compound mm. in March 2018. But here, John Favreau okay, and okay. clean-shaven and de-aged Happy Hogan. This would be a few months after Happy moved out all of Tony's collections from Avengers Tower in Manhattan to the upstate New York compound, which we saw in Spider-Man Homecoming. And it's why this office, which I assume is Tony's office and not Happy's, is filled with Easter eggs. Here's everything I spotted. Mm. On and around the desk, we see the cover of Forbes from Iron yep. Man 3 featuring mm -hmm. Pepper Potts and the headline Pepper Potts stirs up Stark. The prototype okay. Captain America shield from Tony Stark's workshop that he used to prop up the that. machinery in Iron Man 2. Tony's silver colored, I think Mark II helmet before it was mm -hmm. painted red and gold. A Chinese terracotta head, which might be from the events of Iron Man 3 with the Mandarin or who they Mandarin, thought yeah. was the Mandarin, but was actually Aldrich Killian. The swinging sticks desk ornament that drove Tony Stark crazy in Iron Man 2. Tony's original arc reactor, the one with proof Tony Stark has a heart. Right. This would yep. be years before this thing would be placed on his funeral. Please, please say something about the picture. Please say something about the picture. Wreath and Avengers Endgame, a golden winged trophy statuette, and what looks like a Captain America trading card, perhaps the one that Nick Fury took from Agent Coulson's locker and smeared with his blood to motivate the Avengers in the 2012 Avengers film. And then elsewhere in the office on the shelves and walls closer to the door, Tony's Mark V suitcase suit from Iron Man 2, mm -hmm. the one that happened okay. to him in Monaco. A golden statue in the shape of a Mobius strip inverted. This is the shape that five years after this would inspire Tony Stark to unlock the secrets of time travel and give the Avengers a way to undo the snap in Endgame. And then this framed photo of Tony with, it's hard to see him here, but it's Peter Parker. This is a photo that they took as a cover story around the time of Civil War when Peter was holding the Stark internship certificate upside down. We saw this photo in Endgame and Tony was putting rabbit ears behind Peter. Aw. Now Tom Holland is conveniently covered in this shot because this is a Disney Marvel film and they would have needed special permission from Sony to feature Tom Holland as Peter Parker. Oh, that's lame. Okay. Okay, the reason why I thought I thought it wasn't shown. Mm. Oh no, 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 no. Chat, how would the um how would it work since they forgot him? Would they still would he still be in that picture? Yeah, I would assume so. Because they they it's not like it's a flashback though. So Doctor Strange is Sony? No, he's Marvel. No, Spider Man it, is Sony. It's a it was a collaborative movie. Oh, okay, 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 okay. But the thing is, with them snapping, that was during the snap. They didn't forget them. They were just gone. No, 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 no. The movie this movie takes place after the events of Homecoming. Yeah, but they were even though this takes place after the 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 uh the flashback was still twenty eight. No, no, no. I get that. What I'm saying is, could it also be the reason we weren't seeing him is because Peter is forget forgotten in the current. Because no one knows Peter anymore in the current time. But that wasn't the current. But it's a memory from the current. What? It's a he's remembering from current times. Like let let me show you how we started from how we got from here. We're in a flashback. Since we're in a flashback. Mm, okay, I see. You I see what, what I'm saying? saying. I see what you're saying. Um, but it, even though it's a it's a flashback, I feel like it would still be there because at that time he wasn't forgotten. Mm -hmm. So it would probably be there. But if he go there now, mm -hmm. it probably wouldn't be there mm -hmm. on some. You know what I mean? Because at that time, I think Simba's lost. No, I'm not lost. I get what he's saying. It's just that. If you're going to a flashback before he said he was even forgotten. The question like, is, is the flashback before he was forgotten or not? The flashback is before he was forgotten, but the current time, in the current time, he's for sure forgotten. Yeah, but. In this movie, Peter Parker. Is forgotten. Is forgotten. So I'm saying. Oh, you're saying yeah. wouldn't, the, wouldn't him being forgotten erase him, yeah. him from the past That's as well? Him. But I mean, if it, if you wanted to make it a, an accurate flashback, he would be there. You mm -hmm. see what I mean? But he wasn't even on the screen to begin with because of well, no, permission. Because at this point, they don't even remember Spider Man helping in the events. 
No, he was there. They just he's just white from. Or unless they remember Spider Man, they just don't know he's Peter Parker. Oh, okay. Well, in any form um, in this movie. Now, in front of that picture, that's not an actual Iron Man helmet. It's an Iron Man 2 toy helmet from Hasbro. This that's not how to This is one of my favorite Easter eggs in the movie because this is the toy helmet that the kid was wearing at the Stark Expo in Iron Man 2. That kid from Queens that Kevin Feige later established to be a young Peter Parker, according to Tom Holland when mm. Spider-Man Homecoming was coming out. So not only does this cement that connection in canon on screen, it tells us that mm. Tony Stark always remembered that moment, that kid from the Stark Expo, and later internally made the connection himself and wanted to keep this toy to remember that moment. Also, we see a poster for the 1954 Stark okay. Expo which we saw Howard Stark promoting Walt Disney style and archive footage in Iron Man 2. And it was this city of tomorrow that inspired Tony to invent a new element that he could use to power his new arc reactor. Wade nervously interviews for a position on the Avengers and apologizes to Happy Hogan for being caught masturbating in the lobby of Stark <laughs> Tower, which funny. he defines as when you take two Hulk hand toys and it ravage the midsection. I found this line interesting for a number of reasons, because I've always theorized that since Spider-Man No Way Home established that there was no Oscorp in the MCU, that the spider that bit Peter Parker might have actually been irradiated by Bruce Banner's gamma lab that would have been in Avengers Tower, maybe left over after they moved upstate in 2015 after the events of Age of Ultron. And Peter, maybe, was just a kid who broke into this cool place to snoop around, and that would have been one of many security breaches that led to Happy moving everything upstate, and it's also how Wade could have been caught now. It's also funny to me that Wade calls it Stark Tower now, and that he beelined to that tower looking for the Avengers and didn't know that they moved. So Wade wants to be an Avenger to impress Vanessa because their relationship is on the rocks, which tells us that these relationship troubles were happening almost immediately after Wade brought her back to life using time travel in Deadpool 2. And while that seemed like an easy happy ending for them, it makes sense that Vanessa would still walk away from that close call pretty traumatized, especially to learn of some alternate timeline where she actually died and consider Wade way too dangerous mm -hmm. to be around. Wade asks if Happy was the chauffeur and later asks if his superpower is parallel parking, reminding us of <laughs> Happy's beginnings as Tony's driver in the earlier films, but starting in Iron Man 3 is when he became head of security. Wade mentions that he was originally Special Forces, an origin that Wade and Weasel talked about in the 2016 film, and he mentions yeah. his team experience as the founder of the X-Force, who he said all perished due to what the police called gravity, but also that they didn't focus test well. We know that the members Peter and Shatterstar survived due to Wade's efforts from that post credit sequence, but I like that he doesn't want to tell Happy that he used time travel to fix everything, and that originally he got them all killed because he just wants to come off as honest and responsible. That but Happy points crazy. out that Wade wants to be an Avenger because he says he needs it, when really the Avengers do what they do because the world needs them. Which, ouch! He's basically saying, hey Deadpool, no one has ever needed you. This really gives us Wade's whole existential crisis in this movie. He is an yeah. outcast to the primetime MCU, but also a misfit toy from his home reality, which makes him vulnerable to false promises to be the savior of the community that rejected him, but ultimately decides to stay in Earth 10005, that universe that he started in, which is interesting. I also love that Jon Favreau returns for this movie because he originally played Foggy Nelson in the 2003 Daredevil film with yep. Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner in this movie. And it was on that film where he met Kevin Feige. Originally, the scene in Spider-Man No Way Home where Charlie Cox met Murdoch appears, they were going to ad-lib a reference to that history where Happy would have said he was trying to remember something, but that he was feeling, quote, a little foggy. So Deadpool returns to Universe 1 okay. 5, which for years has been our numerical designation for the Fox Marvel Universe of the X-Men. This movie establishes yeah. that the worlds of the first two Deadpool films to be in that same Universe 10005. Even though in the past there has been some thinking among fans that Deadpool 1 and 2 belong to a separate universe, Earth 41633. Now, the Deadpool movie are really supposed to be set in the present day, but they've just had an unclear relationship with the rest of the Fox Marvel world of characters. Like in Deadpool 2, the cast of X-Men from Dark Phoenix, a movie that's supposed to be set in 1992, cameoed in the X-Mansion of the present day. And Deadpool's Colossus is different from the Colossus played by Daniel Cudmore in X2, X-Men The Last Stand, and in Days of Future Past. But clearly, in Ryan Reynolds' mind, Deadpool and these characters existed on the periphery of the X-Men history, which is kind of possible because the events of Days of Future Past altered Universe 10005's timeline so that we don't yeah. really know what happened in the modern X-Men history after the events of X1 up until the happy ending depicted at the end of Days of Future Past, which would have been around 2024. So in this movie, I think we are somewhere in that revised 10005 universe post Days of Future Past, also sometime around 2024, hey. you know, the year we are all in right now. But the issue is we are also supposed to be sometime after the events of Logan, if Wolverine is currently dead in 10005, as he's in this movie. And Logan, hey. we know, was set in the year 2029. In fact, Ryan Reynolds knows this as well. Logan uh, takes place in 2029, mm -hmm. totally separate thing. So I don't know, maybe it's just the way Paradox looks at 10005 is as a universe in which its anchor, Wolverine, will soon die, and eventually that would mean 1005 is just marked for demolition. It's just best not to think about the timeline stuff too much. Sorry about that. So Wade now works. It gets confusing, man. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Yeah, what about it? No, because they, 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 they clearly state he's already dead. Did they clearly state he already? Yeah. Well, yeah. He was digging him up. Yeah. Yeah, he's already dead. He clearly stated it. Wait, say that again, Mikey? I mean, yeah. He clearly, Logan is clearly, de they state Logan is clearly dead mm -hmm. in the movie. Yeah. So that part of his theory is out of the window. But that shit was good. That shit was. It shit is good. Watch. But what, what, it, what it could be, but 
Nigga, because of his time traveling. Because of his time oh, traveling, he could have adjusted when the events happened. True. That so would make the entire that time easy fix. Li- the yeah. entire timeline could have moved up because of the time tampering. Mm. Right, Max. And there is a suit up montage parallel to the suit up montage we see later in the TVA, but there it's red. Here it is this. blue. In Wade Walker is book uh. The Canadian Mounted. That was the sexy romance novel that Deadpool really enjoyed reading in the 2016 film and was seen reading in Deadpool 2. This was the book that John Candy was reading in Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, and Reynolds said that that film was a major inspiration for the buddy comedy plot of this film. He staples a toupee to his head and test drives a Kia Carnival. <laughs> the mom asks how it compares to the Honda oh. Odyssey. Oh! Wait, what? That toupee got ripped off. Yeah. When they took him. Oh. And the staple oh, yeah, that's, right in. That's why he was like, what's that? He was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't see the staple part. That's why. Okay. okay. Yeah. Honda must have paid for a product placement in this movie, but just must have been okay with Ryan Reynolds talking so much shit about the Odyssey, the whole movie. But it does end up growing on him when it comes back later in the void. Rob Delaney returns as Peter, who keeps Wade's suit in his locker. Inside is a sticker with a magpie that might be a reference to the logo for Knott's County, the football club that's a rival to Wrexham AFC, the club co owned by Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhinney and featured in their Welcome to Wrexham docuseries. Wade and Peter bike back home on Wade Street on the corner of Walker and Maine. Now, Walker might be a nod to Walker Scoble, who co-starred with Ryan Reynolds in Sean oh, Levy's yeah. previous film, The Adam Project. Wade is photographed by TVA agents disguised as construction workers and surveyors who must be setting up Paradox's Time Ripper in the TVA outpost in the subway station right, below. But right. this plot will later be the showdown for the final battle between Wade and the Deadpool Corps. The station below, of course, is where Deadpool and Wolverine will have to stop the Time Ripper. Well, it is crime. The movies come full oh, circle yeah. for their final acts. For example, the Heart of the Day Hotel in the Oh, Oak it was a, that is a Harmon Circle. What? That is a Harmon Circle. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's an incomplete. How? It, because the Harmon Circle, it would have had to start it there. The movie would have had to start where it ended. Oh. Yeah. Okay. It seemed like it at first. But you see, the Matrix is the same hotel where Neo confronts the Agent Smith in the final act. But I will say, I still need to watch movie, that. The street just had <laughs> so much Matrix? like a cost nope. saving wow. studio backlot set that you might see on like a sitcom. In fact, when we all saw it in trailers, we just assumed this would be part of the void. That's how like goofy it looked. Like we all thought this would not be something meant to look like the real world. I will say, this set just kind of always took me out of the movie a little bit. Wade walks yeah. into a surprise party with Peter and Blind Al is there, Vanessa, Dopender, Colossus, Negasonic Teenage Warhead, Yukio, Shatterstar, and Buck. And Buck was a mercenary from the Sister Margaret's bar. According to the Cooper Ross model, denial is just one of the five stages. Of grief. Jesus Christ, fuck. <laughs> The worst speaking lines for you. <laughs> and Wade actually calls back that line in this scene after he lists off a bunch of hot button political issues and then says, hut, 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 no speaking lines, Buck. Blind Al wants cocaine. In Deadpool 1, Wade said that there was 116 kilos of cocaine hidden in the apartment somewhere right beside the cure for blindness. Damn. And then in Deadpool 2, a floorboard is lifted showing Wade's cocaine <laughs> near a container marked cure for blindness. Cure for blindness. Wade says, wow. hey, Max, the one thing that Feige said is off limits. What about Bolivian marching belt? No, oh, this. Feige, Kevin Feige. He's been saying it the oh, whole time. Oh, yeah. shoot. Lang term, they have a list. Even snowboarding? Even disco dust. White girl interrupter? Even force bump. Do you want to build a snowman? Yes! Yes, Wade references one of Disney's <laughs> biggest hits, Frozen. And in Deadpool 2, Wade observes how Do You Want to Build a Snowman has the same melody as Papa Can You Hear Me from Barbara Streisand's Gentle. Yes, Ryan Reynolds and Wade Wilson are huge Broadway nerds. Wade learns that Vanessa is seeing someone new named Dermot who likes hiking. In the background, we hear Juice Newton's Angel of the Morning, the song that played over the opening shot of the 2016 film. On the walls of Wade and Al's apartment is print art that looks like Roy Lichtenstein prints. Roy Lichtenstein was a 1960s pop artist known for a comic strip inspired parody art. And one of these stills looks like his famous in the car painting, but it has been reversed with the woman driving, which is just kind of interesting because. Deadpool's role in Marvel Comics is to use the medium of comic book cinema as a lens through which he parodies the genre and subverts it by reversing roles just like this. Wade stands over his cake and says that all the people he loves are in this room right now. Sorry, Weasel, TJ Miller was not invited back for this film. And he goes to make a wish. Yeah. Now, this movie later references The Wizard of Oz, so I'm even more okay than usual drawing this comparison. But in my long running theory that every American movie is trying to be either The Wizard of Oz or Citizen Kane, basically, is it trying to be a dream or is it trying to be a puzzle? Deadpool and Wolverine is totally trying to be Wizard of Oz, right? Like the whole movie is Wade's yeah. wish fulfillment and the knock at the door comes precisely when he makes a wish on his birthday candle as his wish is to be a Marvel hero who matters, an Avenger who's needed. He's transported to a magical dream world in this movie with fantastical weirdos and a little dog too. And he's torn between these warring witch and tongue, wizard bro. Right? And ultimately Deadpool wakes up from the dream and learns to appreciate his home as there is no place like it. With this movie, I think Ryan Reynolds might be recognizing that these characters haven't really needed Deadpool in their lives, at least in the past two films. Basically, all this time it's been people worn down by his resolve and his nonstop bits. So they end up just giving in to this needy clown who's dealing with his bullshit. And I think Ryan Reynolds is self-aware 
self-aware enough to know that he, as an actor, writer, producer, shares those traits with himself a bit. Like it was he who willed this franchise into existence after his pride was stung from the negative reaction to his character in 2009, X-Men Origins Wolverine. And rather than wait for the studio to build on that character as they definitely meant to do, or just walk away like a lot of other actors do from bad comic book movies, he was like, no. He found the writers of the best bloodiest comedy I'm of that year, Southland, yeah, to produce that shit, this new I'm Deadpool script. And then leaked it. And then he pressured Fox into paying for a test shoot and then leaked that test footage too, all so that he could make this new comic accurate Deadpool with him. The nigga, the nigga was... He's, a, he's fucking smart as hell. He's a fucking psychopath. Yeah, he is, <laughs> but he's smart. He leaked the script. He mm -hmm. leaked the, the, the footage. The test footage. Mm -hmm. He's like, y'all, they, they gonna love me. Yeah. They gonna make him love I'm gonna make him love me. I'm gonna make him love me. And, and, and he know. won. And he won. Yeah. I'm very glad he did all this. In complete creative control. And isn't that a kind of obsessive trait that Deadpool would do too? Was Ryan Reynolds really doing it for us or was he doing it for himself? Yet with the success of the Deadpool movies and now earning a spot in the MCU, I think Ryan Reynolds feels, well, I can't just parade him in the MCU. I have to make him a misfit toy who must first fight through the MCU's trash heap, like the forgotten toys in Toy Story 3 who have to brave the furnace. So it may be a nothing detail, but this apartment's number is 17. And 17 is a recurring number in the MCU. 17 was one of the Winter Soldier activation words. 17A was a silo number in Avengers Campus that contained Tony Stark's Iron Spider armor in Infinity War. And in that same movie, T'Challa order to open Northwest Section 17. Really, the secret to 17 is that it is just a oddly specific prime number, and screenwriters use it because it's simultaneously a lot of something, but also not a ton of something. Here, 17 is just a sign that Wade and Al can only afford to live in a building with a lot of units in it. Wade thinks that the TVA are erotic dancers or sex workers, thinking their pruning sticks are sex toys. I missed this Pegging part. Isn't I told you something what happens. But it is for Disney. Happened. Yes, Pegging isn't Wait. new to Deadpool. Vanessa when wore a strap on for International Women's Day during the Calendar yeah. Girl montage uh, of this film. <laughs> but Wade is brought to the TVA to meet Paradox, played by Matthew McFadden and Tom Wamscans from Succession. Mr. Paradox comes from She-Hulk Volume 2, Number 3 in 2005. He was one of the judges of the TVA who was very quickly killed off when he was hit by a retro cannon. But like all the named characters Jesus. in the TVA and the MCU, the live action versions of them are more fully realized with like different motives. So just a reminder, if you didn't watch Loki, the TVA is the Time Variance Authority, responsible for monitoring all the timelines in the multiverse and originally tasked with pruning branch timelines and the variants who create those branches down to the void, which is a vast junkyard policed by a guard dog, purple smoke monster made of antimatter named Elias. In the Loki series, we learned that the TVA was created by He Who Remains, a variant of the time travel villain Kang the Conqueror and he remains what doesn't the lot no 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 no, no. I, I was about to say I think the Galact... I was thinking Galactus eats antimatter he doesn't he doesn't anti I think antimatter is Galactus's weakness so ignore the pause it was a bad pause Bad pause. <laughs> bad, bad, pause. Pause. bad pause. Bad pause. He uses the TDA and Elias to erase all possible branch timelines and histories that could lead to rival Kang variants that would result in a multiversal war breaking back out. In season two, the TDA's temporal loom gets overwhelmed, leading to the spaghettification of reality until Loki figures out a way to bypass the Remains equation by sacrificing himself and physically holding all strands of time in his hands, sitting alone at the nexus of eternity as a god of stories presiding over all existence alone. Mm. So Damn, now with Loki in charge, the TDA no longer violently prunes branch timelines, but nurtures a flowering multiverse. But Paradox doesn't vibe with the new marching orders. Paradox says that Wade's messing around with Cable's time travel device isn't why he's here. And he says, Oh, he wanted okay. back to the uh, good that days. Snap. Sounded a lot like the snap from the Disney Plus animation. <laughs> Paradox explains that Wade has been selected for some mysterious higher purpose to save the sacred timeline from a possible grisly fate sometime in the future. Paradox turns on the video screens, which show clips of Steve Rogers' Captain America from MCU past. We see fighting Loki in Germany in 2012 Avengers, wielding Mjolnir in the Battle of Earth in Endgame, leading the Howling Commandos, uh -huh. bashing in through the door on that World War II mission oh, against Hydra in the first Captain America film yeah, in 2011. We see Cap saluting from the past Captain America film, while on the right, you can see the airport battle from Civil War with Wanda mm. and Black Panther. Then we cut back out to Wade saluting back as we see Captain America fighting Batron the Leaper in the opening fight scene in Captain America Winter Soldier. And then in the middle, that's the Avengers leaping to the right in their Hydra battle in Age of Ultron. And then on the far right, Cap in close-up when he was facing Bucky in the Winter Soldier final battle on the Project Insight Helicarrier. But as the scene continues, there are more familiar shots, including various ones from the Endgame final battle, like Steve right. summoning lightning with Mjolnir while fighting Thanos, and T'Challa retracting his helmet to tell Hawkeye, Clint, give it to me, remembering Clint's name from Civil War when initially T'Challa said he didn't care what his name was. And as Wade walks away, we see Tony's I am Iron Man moment from Avengers Endgame. Throughout all this, we are hearing Alan Silvestri's Avengers theme Music. As Paradox says that Wade can be a hero among heroes, a new image appears on screen showing Thor cradling Deadpool's body <laughs> in a similar pose as Thor Crying. holding Loki when he thought Loki was dying on Svartalfheim in 2013's Thor The Dark World. And the music shifts from the Avengers theme to an Asgardian melody. And Paradox says, uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. That happens in a distant future. And he makes the tech take the footage off the screen. Hmm. So Deadpool's future with Thor is perhaps the biggest unanswered question coming out of this movie. Mm. Jessica Clement is actually breaking this down in a video coming tomorrow. But Deadpool in this movie from here forward often wakes okay. up from sleeping gasping, Thor or God of Thunder, which I think could be a clue that Deadpool 
people might be dreaming, aka peering into the life of a multiversal self, according to Doctor Strange, who said that's what all dreams oh, yeah. are in the Multiverse of Madness film, and seeing a possible future that might pay off in Secret Wars. Like, I think the uh, grisly fate in the Secret Timeline that the higher power selected Wade for was God of Stories Loki recognizing that Deadpool has a role to play in Secret Wars or in an Avengers versus X-Men conflict, maybe both him and Wolverine needing to bridge the peace in a future incursion between 1005 and 616. I see these niggas in the Avenger movie. Hold on, home Marvel. Jeez. Oh, oh, Marvel. Hey. Oh, I'm just hoping these two next two hey, Avengers movies Marvel is worth it, bro. Is so back, bro. Yeah, I'm just hoping. I'm right, just hoping, bro. bro. I, I, like, like I said, I think a lot of people are writing off RDJ as uh, Doctor Doom, um, because they feel like his death was unjustified. Like they feel like they're just bringing him back to save the the universe, right? Mm -hmm. And they're like, some people don't like it. Some people feel like Doom should be. Victor Doom. It should be a version of him that's not uh, Tony Stark or RDJ. And to be completely honest with you, I feel like it's too early to write it off as bad. Yeah. I think it's, I honestly think it's going to be good. I can't stop bourbon, bro. Yeah, don't, yeah. Uh, don't <laughs> That may end with Deadpool making a sacrifice play in a way that makes Thor grateful because it could allow Thor to see his brother again and make good on Loki's promise to his brother in Infinity War. I assure you, brother, the sun will shine on us again. Deadpool says the power in the Marvel Universe is about to change forever, which is him totally making fun of Dwayne The Rock Johnson, who spent like an entire oh. Comic-Con repeating this. Because the hierarchy of power in the DC Universe <laughs> Is about to change. It only gets funnier and funnier over the years. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, uh, yeah. Bro, uh, get him out of the superhero uh, universe. Any of them. It don't matter please. which one. Get him out. Please. This ego has got him doing stupid shit. Please. Oh for the I also, God. also, oh, I'm, I'm a, boy, y'all about to hate me for this. What We shouldn't have a new Superman. We shouldn't. We shouldn't have a new Superman, bro. <laughs> I oh, I loved Henry. The Henry cameo in this. Yeah, bro. The Henry Cowell cameo in this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that. He's like, what are you doing? You're leaving, bro. I say, like, okay. <laughs> I'm gone. Calvarine. <laughs> Check off your shirt, though. I'll leave quick. <laughs> Oh, that, about Black Adam, that it was going to be so game changing just because it brought back Henry Cavill for a cameo as Superman in the post credit scene and even spoiled that in the marketing and still the movie underperformed. But Johnson remains in denial about it underperforming. And poor Henry Cavill would soon after be recast anyway. So this never happened. But Deadpool does give Henry Cavill some redemption in this movie. Deadpool says, I am. Marvel Jesus. Notice how he uses the same pace as Tony Marvel Stark Jesus. when he made his big move in Avengers Endgame. I Wade headbutts the camera, breaking the glass, literally cracking the fourth wall, and says, Suck it, Fox, I'm going to Disneyland. And actually, Deadpool <laughs> is now meetable at Disneyland's Avengers Campus. A Deadpool gets a new suit from the TDA tailor with adamantium katanas, and once again, yeah, the grip of the base nice of the touch. blade, there's little Deadpool eyes on either side of the yeah. sword, so that when he stabs you through the base, a second set of little eyes will be the last thing you would see. The butts of the grips used to read B and Arthur, Deadpool named his swords after his favorite golden girl, but now they read DR, and I think SB, which could be for Dorothy, Rose, Sophia, and Blanche, all four golden girls. Also, as before, the muzzle of his gun is etched with the words smile wait for the flash oh, and in the throwback to the gratuitous suit up montages of movies like Batman and Robin we get a lot of close-ups of Deadpool's crime really a lot he was smacking the hell out of you he was like I think you're Taylor you look very nice nice your buddy here is ready to throw it all away for me calling your wife and is your wife working HR this TVA agent is played by James Dryden and he was the one with the I love me heart mug but Paradox explains that Wade will not be able to take any of his friends with him showing him his dying timeline using a similar interface that we saw in the Loki series we see the line decaying Paradox says that this happens when a universe loses its anchor being, saying, quote, an anchor being is an entity of such vital importance that when they die, their whole world slowly withers out of existence. This concept. Was Tony an anchor being? Could have been. He could have been. Could have been. Bro, because that would explain. And dying doesn't necessarily have. Dying can mean obscurity. Dying can mean obscurity. Because when Logan died, the Fox Cinematic Universe started dying. Mm, right. so when, when Tony died, the Marvel Cinematic yeah, Universe started, started dying. dying. Literally. So he's the real life anchor bean. He, he really was. Therefore, them bringing it back is essentially the same thing he did. Oh my fucking that god. That nigga was the real life anchor bean for, for the, the fucking Marvel Universe. Yeah. And then his movie started it all. Bro. It, Bro, and just how bringing Logan back re-solidified his universe, 
Them bringing back Artie. Oh, oh my. my. Let me fucking cook, nigga. Cook, boy. Damn. <laughs> nah, that's, that's valid. That's Let valid. Go. Let him cook now. Set of an anchor bean comes from Jonathan Hickman's Time Runs Out storyline, which leads to the 2015 Secret Wars crossover event. Owen Reese, aka Molecule Man, we learn was installed in every universe by the Beyonders as an experimental ticking time bomb to trigger the death of that universe. But Dr. Doom ends up interfering with that plan. But this idea of an anchor bean is more of an organic natural phenomenon. Like just every universe that spawns into existence just has one all important anchor bean at some point in its history. And that thousands of years after that anchor dies. Nigga, nigga, it makes so much fucking sense. It literally, because think about everything that happens. Peter loses everything. Yeah. We lose, not only do we lose Cap, we lose Steve Rogers. Mm -hmm. Um, <coughs> real, real life, we lost T'Challa. But in the yeah, movie, we, we lost T'Challa. Like, throughout all, bro, Thor, everything, bro. Falling apart. We even lost Hulk. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, really? Low key. When you think about it retrospectively, when you think about it retrospectively, yeah, that's that was the that was the end, and that would also it would also solidify RDJ coming back as Doctor Doom, not just as a variant, but as someone who exists in this universe could one reset a lot of the shit that's already happened. It can fix a lot of the bad that's already happened. Yeah, we even lost fine ass Gamora. Yeah, we lost Gamora. Black Widow too. Yeah. Well, Gamora yeah. came back. Gamora came back. When? She's in Gamora Ben came yeah, back. Hey, huh? That's a, that's another motherfucker. But <laughs> but all, but all the the but you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. We got theories going. That's what you missed, man. We got you know what I'm saying? We lost our anchor being, bro. Is that universe just starts to Spaghettify. One wonders what the anchor of the MCU was. Could it have been Tony Stark or Steve Rogers? Our mother, Wanda Maximoff? Practically, nope. Tony Stark probably makes the most sense and Marvel Studios wants to keep building on this idea as they seek to bring back Robert Downey Jr. in Secret Wars. Paradox says that the anchor of 10005, Deadpool's universe, and the universe of the Fox X-Men was James Hallett, Logan Wolverine. And he pulls up Logan's death from the end of the 2017 Logan film and all the TVA techs watch it as if it's their favorite movie. In fact, when Logan says his dying words of, so this is what it feels like, Paradox mouths along, probably longing for his own death. Paradox says that he was tasked with just overseeing the eventual death of universe. 1005, but that he doesn't want to wait for it to happen naturally. He says, we used to just prune these things. Simple, elegant, efficient. I'm told the TVA doesn't like to do that anymore. Well, I do. And no matter what my superiors say, the multiverse does not need a babysitter. We need a mercy killer. And during this line, there is an insert close-up of Matthew McFadden on what looks like a composited background, making me think that they might have added this extra line about the TVA's new policy late in the production after Loki Season 2 yeah. came out. Because both Loki Season 2 and Deadpool and Wolverine script were really just being written at the same time. But the babysitter that Paradox uh -huh. is referring to would be B-15, but she is carrying out the will of God of Stories Loki. So we don't know if Paradox knows that Loki Loki has taken over the organization, or if he's just seeing the TVA from the perspective of middle management, and he just got him. Also, 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 also. He could know why, like, along with him getting scared because of it being a, him being, because remember, it was like, why you got scared? It's like, oh, this could be secret. It also could be that extra piece that he knows Loki runs it. But also, another cool thing. They can introduce another character to replace Loki. They can introduce Anansi. Anansi is the story weaver. And Anansi could replace Loki and Loki. Now, them introducing him is a real big stretch, but it'll be a way cooler say. A memo that said his job changed. But Paradox's resistance tells us how dangerous the TVA really is. It has internal divisions and factions that resist change and covertly are able to use parts of it for their own agendas. Paradox unveils his mercy killing machine, the Time Ripper, saying once completed, it will allow me to destroy the space-time matrix of your universe. Later, when we see the Time Ripper in action, its insides make it look like it's composed or at least powered by dozens of reset charge canisters from the mm -hmm. Loki series. And remember, each one of those could prune a single branch of a timeline before that branch crossed the threshold, at least. So it makes sense that it would take dozens of these dozens, powered yeah. by yeah, columns yeah. of matter and antimatter underneath to completely spaghettify an entire trunk of a reality. Deadpool headbutts Paradox and leaps to grab his temp pad, planning to find a Wolverine who could fill that anchor spot. And he nearly sits on the face of that TVA tech, but instead he just opens a time door and takes the guy's mug. Well, I know he was scared. Talk about no, he, nah, he was, was happy. I mean, happy. Stars yeah, exactly. of every YouTube channel but particularly on New Rockstars, we would not be able to do anything without our editors. And on every video we make here at New Rockstars, our editors use Adobe Premiere Pro Yay! to make it look good. Boom, you looking for this? We use Adobe Premiere Pro to yeah. and combine virtually any type of
Nate, maybe you should start those apps. Whatever works best for Coda. This lead hunter says that he's the worst thing to come out of Canada, which is funny because they're right by the Canadian border here. And Deadpool uses that to break his rule not to use weapons and this awesome bounce shot to kill him. Deadpool now goes on a montage, sets a Huey Lewis in the news as the power of love, searching the multiverse for a new living Wolverine. This is a song that played in Back to the Future over shots of Marty entering the Hill Valley Town Square. So it's kind of a good watch that montage too. song. Deadpool arrives <laughs> in this bar with axe throwing that. and he meets a Wolverine of comic accurate. That shit was funny. That shit was hilarious. That, was hilarious. that is literally how tall That's how he's supposed to be. Logan yeah, yeah. is like five three. Yeah, the like, Logan's the little accurate Wolverine. But the crazy like, part, he buff as shit. He like a like a fucking Charlie horse. Bro, but that nigga jumped down off that It's like he stuck the landing. Oh Jackman has been shrunk in big ass head. Wolverine was given this height in the comics to better reflect a stocky Wolverine like statue, as in Wolverine the animal. And it's always been an issue since they cast the towering six foot two Hugh Jackman to play the part. Next, we see Deadpool in this fiery alley with grungy oh. post apocalyptic graffiti. Weapon X, Wolverine right? here is the Age of Apocalypse Wolverine who uses okay. the alias Weapon X. This is from Earth 29. You say you, you, you. He so remember every fucking thing. Everything. He remember everything. And by when Apocalypse has taken over North America and decimated the rest yo, of the yo. planet. <laughs> Jackman here. Oh, <laughs> shit. Leather suit with the red stripes, the tangled hair, and this metal stump on one arm, though we don't see it here, is capable of releasing three claws as well. Next, Deadpool finds in a casino, Patch. This is Wolverine's alter ego from the 80s who gambles and wears an eye patch, dresses like James Bond. This is an alias like used by Wolverine since yeah. that time, okay. but recently that in 2022, tough. there was a solo run written by Larry Hama that follows Wolverine on recon mission to Madripoor at the Princess Bar. That thing look to too much light. The, the crazy yeah. thing about Patch, Patch and Greyhawk are different personalities that exist in the beat. Which is really fucking cool. Mm, I think I'm a cosplay patch one day. Homesteader you know Wolverine, double tough. the grizzle, kind of like Clint Eastwood. Now I don't think this is old. I was oh I was, I was wondering if this was old man Logan, but we saw old man Logan die. Or at the Princess Bar, Deadpool walks up to a homesteader Wolverine who's old and grizzled, kind of like Clint Eastwood. Now I don't think this is old man Logan, since old man Logan has bushier mutton chops, and it's in like a post-apocalyptic future. This looks like it's in the olden days, and he blows Deadpool away with a shotgun. Then Deadpool lands in this horrifying field of red sky. What the fuck was this one? Um. I only know a little bit about this one, where, where Logan's the last person alive. Who we'll we'll put him on a goddamn X? This from Chris Claremont's Uncanny X Men number 251, when Wolverine is being tortured by the Reavers, which was actually the name of the mercenaries from the Logan film, but those were different than how they are in these comics. This giant yellow X will also return as a visual when we arrive in the void later. Next, Deadpool finds a classic John Byrne. My favorite Rattity. Wolverine. This, okay, so. I'm gonna stop pausing. I'm sorry. This is very big for me. I yeah, apologize. Right. <laughs> so, um, there's another version of this that was in um, X Men Evolution. Right. It's my favorite version. It's my favorite version of the suit. Um, instead of the brown and yellow, it's brown and orange. And it looks so freaking cool. When I first saw this, I thought that originally was that suit until I realized it was a different version. Tan suit on a Wolverine, which was the original rendering of how Wolverine mm. looked in the Marvel comics. And Deadpool asks, mm, "Didn't you fight a Hulk in this outfit?" And then Wolverine mm, sneaks his claws and that Hulk was, that was that nice. shit was, that was nice. recreation of the cover of Todd McFarlane's yeah. The Incredible Hulk number three forty. Hulk, and it looks like the Mark Ruffalo version and not the Edward Norton version, punches Deadpool into the roots of a tree. And lastly, the muscular. That was. A Let me show you something. Let me show you something. How you just missed a great, a great Easter egg. Okay, talk to me. Hulk, and it looks like the Mark Ruffalo right, version, so and not the Edward Norton version. Punches Deadpool into the. He punches him into a tree, right? Right. Uh -huh. He in a tree. It could be that could be two prom, right? First time I saw it, I'm like, oh, that could be a play on when Logan yeah, got stabbed would, on the yeah, tree. Yeah, that's what I thought it was referencing. That's one reference. Another reference this could have been is in I think it was not the Mark Ruffalo, the Incredible Hulk, not the first one, but the second edition. Okay. Hulk. Kick Buddy into a tree with the dude who became Abomination, mm -hmm. and literally that's how he he hit the tree and collapsed. Uh, so that also could have been one. The roots of a tree, and lastly, the muscular total package. Wolverine smoking a cigar over a motorcycle is revealed to be Henry Cavill. Deadpool wow. says that Cavill <laughs> has arrived, and he says we will treat you so much better than those shit fucks down the street. Of course, referring to the fan support of Henry Cavill over the way Warner Brothers brought to an end the Zack Snyder era of the DC films, specifically oh, Henry Cavill, who turned down other projects to come back and play Superman just for the that's studio to be like, nah, you know what? We're gonna reboot the entire DC slate. To be clear, I don't blame James Gunn for that. I don't. You should. You literally should. <laughs>
I don't give a fuck what anybody so says. To cast somebody that look like it a lit, bro, 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 bro. To say it's not James Gunn's fault is like to say the dude who pulled the trigger isn't a shooter. He literally fired everyone. Everyone. And then it was like, well, Urza might come back. Blue Beetle might. I don't give a fuck. It is his fault. And if you don't believe that, or you have some I, idiotic, idiotic misconception that it isn't James Gunn's fault, then you should have died in Guardians of the Galaxy. God damn. Jeez. Damn. Because by no means, if you have creative control over the universe and then decide all the people who are here, mm -hmm. I'm not bringing them back. That is your fault. That's why I stand with Henry Cavill, Gal Gadot, and all of them for suing Warner Brothers. Mm -hmm. Henry literally... Oh, he let go of everybody? I think the only one who might be staying is Gal Gadot, and we don't know for sure. But Ben Affleck, gone. Okay, I'm We're gonna fuck about that. I'm bro, that Superman and Wonder Woman. Why would you do that? Gone. But we possibly might have Urza Miller. Like, let's let's keep. Why he not the one fired? Let's keep it a. I'm whole, not understanding. Let's keep it a whole bean, bro. Let's keep it a whole bean. Let's talk about it subjectively. Let's be real with ourselves. You literally, he literally came in, and was like, you know what? Boom! I'm going to get rid of everyone here. And the thing is, the 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 thing that pisses me off so much. Henry Cavill had to turn down Witcher. He literally had to turn down his role in Witcher. That's why the uh, the uh, Chris Hemsworth's brother is now the main actor in Witcher because he had to he had to give up that role. He and that's also the way to rock, bitch. I had Johnson, you bald bitch, you fucking bald motherfucker. That's why they hate you in WWE, nigga. And that's why every time you do the rock bottom, your knees give out, bitch. This means something to me, nigga. You ruined it. You literally ruined. I used to love you. You was my favorite wrestler. Now you a buff bitch. I hate you. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. The goddamn. Goddamn. He ruined everything. He ruined the Witcher series. He, he like literally because you want to be the big man on campus so bad, dude. You want to be the big man on campus so bad, so bad that you you were the causation for a guy to lose a lot of his biggest roles because you were big in your britches. And then on top of that, the dude that lost he just lost the way in the book. Like, bro! <laughs> All right, let's just finish. The I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> we went off the deep end. Oh, God. D1 crash out. <laughs> I, 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 I just blame the studio for taking so damn long. I'm, I'm sorry, Rock. Sorry, Rocky, but damn. Hey, to make up their enough. minds on what they were going to do with this IP. But I do think, or at least I hope, that Henry Cavill made quite a bit of money from just the studio having to renew his contract. Finally, Deadpool arrives to this Canadian bar where he finds a very, very drunk Wolverine. The shot of Wolverine from behind evokes the shot of Wolverine from the trailer for Insomniac's PS5 game. The bartender is yeah. played by Greg Hintel, a Scottish comedian from shows like Still Game. He tries to get Wolverine to leave because, as we'll learn later, this Wolverine turned humanity against the X Men. After his X Men got killed, he just continued to wage war on humanity, both the bad humans and the good humans, and really just turned into the asshole of his universe. There are Calgary Flames logos and banners. And this is also a reference to. Uh, um, um, Days of Future Past. One of those are um, uh, X Men Weren't freshman you class. You watched Captain America. Oh yeah, I was when I first watched Captain America. I was high as hell. I think it was freshman class. One of those where they find him in a bar. So this is this references. Oh, they did. They, they this did. references several several, several, yeah, several, several the originals. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, it references several. It's all over this bar, but standing in the background is a cameo by Ollie Palmer, striker for Wrexham AFC. On the tip jar is a sign. I love this. Just put the tip in, see how it feels. This Wolverine tries to snick his claws, but they only come out an inch or so. <laughs> say guys. The opening fight of the 2017 Logan yep. film, where a similarly drunk Logan, who worked as a chauffeur, like Happy Hogan, tried to fight carjackers, but the claws only came halfway out. This is even worse, which shows he's even drunker. Wolverine chugs an entire handle of whiskey and Deadpool quips that audiences are accustomed yeah. to long run times. But Deadpool and Wolverine at two hours and eight minutes is on the shorter side of MCU movies, at least these big tentpole ones. Deadpool sees that this Wolverine wears a blue and yellow suit under his clothes, which he sees as a good sign. And he actually turns to the camera and says, that only took 20 
years, which is a reference to the first X-Men yeah. movies when Brian uh. Singer and Fox refused to put the X-Men in comic accurate colors and even made fun of those looks. You actually go outside in these things? What would you prefer? Yellow spandex. But Kevin Feige recently revealed at a press conference that the success of The Matrix in 1999 was part of the reason why, saying there were studio execs in charge who knew that The Matrix had been a big hit and The Matrix had black leather, so oh, put them in black leather. A few was... months ago, episode 9 of X Men 97 reclaimed that Logan Cyclops moment from the 2000 film. Am I going to war or a circus? What do you expect? Black leather? Deadpool drags Wolverine back mm, into the TVA yeah. saying, On your left, baby girl. A reference to the on your left exchanges yeah. between Steve Rogers and Sam Wilson, notably when Sam Wilson reappeared through a portal in Endgame. Deadpool says this one does musicals, referring to Hugh Jackman's background as a musical stage actor. Paradox yeah. says that you can't swap in any... And uh, his musical movie. He did a musical movie. The other Wolverine as an anchor, and that this Wolverine was the worst of them all. Wolverine awakens and Deadpool says, Hey, welcome to the MCU, by the way. You're joining at a bit of a low point. Indeed, after Quantumania, yeah, Secret Invasion, yeah. and the Marvels, the MCU had a pretty mixed 2023. But I think oh, you should recognize terrible. a low point for terrible. the MCU is probably a high watermark for most other Hollywood franchises. Deadpool have threatens to the use Marvels? his Black Belt and Karen to see what you see which ones? Boy, I swear to God, I swear to God, like if I, boy. Oh, wait, wait, see what? Wait, wait, see what? The Marvels. Oh, is that with the, the Captain shorties. Marvel and the yeah? Nah, no, I didn't even watch that shit. Yeah. I could. I actually really did not like Bro, the Captain Marvel. I have, movie. Oh, oh my god! I thought ooh, it was I, I fiz, man, man. If I could mutual combat the writers because they missed the opportunity to bring in the greatest black superhero of all time, the real Blue Marvel is a boy dog. A dog. See, and, and my thing is, like, they could have did that. So that that scene, that the girl, the girl scene of um, was it Infinity? War? Infinity War. That was a great fucking scene. Y'all could have made something great out of that, but like, it just they seems... gave us Marvels and Battle Web. <laughs> Oh, don't even, man, man, don't like even, bro. Knew how to do uh, it. You oh, had the oh. layout and you fucked that whole shit up. The worst part, the worst part with Madam Web. I fucked with Luke Cage when it first came out. Luke Cage was cool. Madam Web was so bad because her ability is to be to exist in space all at the same time. Therefore, the girls was falling. Get up! You got this. Let me. Oh, I didn't even see that shit. Oh, oh. And ooh. what what pisses me off? It, like, are you gonna go see the the new um? Is it is it would it be technically a Captain America? Oh, you talking about the new Captain America? Yeah. No, I, I'm gonna watch it to watch it, but I'm gonna wait till it's on on Disney Plus. <laughs> yeah, you're not going. You're not going. No. You're not gonna go to the theater. Uh, I, I, I thought the trailer was kind of tough. Yeah, I, I, thought it was I don't tough. care. Falcon will never. It would never be Captain. But he yeah. said that though. Oh, is it because he he's black? He said that though. No, bro. <laughs> It's, it's because yeah. it's that's it's not because he's, he's a nigga. Because he's a nigga. I'll be real. I'll be real. I'll be real with you. Like for example, Val Zod's a black Superman. I love Val Zod. I love Val Zod. Sam Wilson. Because he ain't got the juice. Sam Wilson. He ain't juiced up. He just got Anthony tech. Mackie, the nigga who looked like he always got a surprise. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm, and I love him. Why you take that? Damn! And then you take me like he always got a secret. And then he look like he always got a secret. Yeah, he do. Like, come on, bro. Jeez. I'm motherfucker. I'm Tupac. That pissed me off. I ain't gonna lie. They should never let that nigga play Tupac, bro. That shit pissed me off so bad, bro. Oh, and Paradox and his team for going off the book. And Paradox like brings them both to the void. Now, again, the void in the Loki series is where the TVA prunes redundant people and things from erased timelines. Throughout this part of the movie, though, you can see stuff continuing to drop into the void from yeah, I saw that in the sky, as things did in Loki season one, episode five. And while that seems to contradict the TVA's new mission of no longer pruning timelines, consider A, we don't see people being pruned now, and B, the universes that lose their anchor still naturally end up in the void regardless of what the TVA does. Now there is a large 20th Century Fox it's logo, which yeah. itself is a huge meta leap because it's saying something from outside the reality of any of these movies, a studio title bumper is prunable to the void. But you know, it's not like yeah. the 20th Century Fox logo exists in our reality. Like you can't drive around Century City in LA and be like, oh, there it is. No, it only just exists whenever you watch a movie or a TV show. It's technically kind of like on the border of the media itself, kind of like the Disney Plus loading screen in She-Hulk. But more importantly, symbolically, this represents the movie's theme that it's not just these characters with their own realities getting erased, it's really their cinematic existence yeah, within the minds of the viewers that isn't made from memory with these studio acquisitions. Like sometimes with these streaming wars, when one studio gobbles up another, you can't even find this IP on any streaming platform anywhere. And hopefully you have Bro. physical media of it, which is just a reminder, always, always buy physical media. You never know what's yeah. going to happen. But while Universe 1005 in this movie is still intact at this point you know in the movie, seeing the Fox logo here might suggest that the Facts. erosion has begun, that the studio title bumper... The
Also, also, this furthers the ideation that the end of the Fox universe is here. Beginning of any of these movies has already. Yeah, I'm a cooking this. Y'all better this is, yeah, The yeah, studio yeah. logo is buried in a way that leaves the X in Fox exposed, which is a very deep cut nod to the way the Fox logo would fade to black before several X Men movies, but leave the X below yeah. yeah. in extra frames because you know X Men. Particularly in this film, the unburied X suggests that all other Fox Marvel titles have been pruned. You know, Daredevil, The Fantastic Four, yeah. but that the X Men through Wolverine, and Deadpool are still hanging on by a thread for now. Deadpool yeah. wakes up on the dusty ground. To the left is a comic book, Jonathan Hickman's Secret Wars Number Five, yeah. from yeah. 15, I didn't see which shows that. on the cover God and Doom forming out of the. And Owen Reese. This is the please, wait, please, wait, please, go please, back? please. So this is pretty. If this, oh, I, I, I pray, I pray, I pray. In Secret Wars it? number five from 2015, which shows on the cover God Emperor Doom forming out of the Beyonders and Owen Reese. This is the issue that reveals how Doctor Doom powered up into God Emperor by using the Beyonders universe death triggers and Molecule Men as conduits to absorb the Beyonders power, and it's that power that Doom used to create Battle World after the incursion between universes 616 and 1610. And that may end up being what happens in Secret Wars. They may even yeah. take the void and build out Battle World from that. And on top of this yeah. comic book is a bottle of Pingaroche, the juice bottle from the Brazilian plant where Edward Norton yeah, Bruce Banner. I didn't even know that. Whole film. Okay. He fled onto the assembly line, getting a bunch and of yeah. Stan Lee. sick, including Stan Lee. We also see Toronto's CN Tower, another Canada mm. reference for Ryan Reynolds, a shield helicarrier. This actually might have even been the one that Wade fought Francis on in the 2016 okay. movie. Uh, a Chitauri Leviathan from the Battle of New York in the 2012 Avengers film. Damn. A little boat that our colleague Wait, so they said this shit the, 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 uh... The shit from like that uh, get left in the universe from the they send that shit to the void. Yeah, if if that universe is gone, it's gone. Things, everything. No, is I want to the say void. this uh, like, what, Mister Girth, lock in or you gonna get time, bots, please. Um. Anyway, because it that's in the void because of the time reset. Yeah, it's it's convoluted. This shit it's, it's gets a lot me. Of, yeah, it's a lot of, okay, so that's why I stay surface level. So <laughs> I there's, stay there's very a, okay. So look, there's a fork in the universe, right? Okay. Everything in that fork of the six one six is gone, and it's either in the void or erased from existence. And that was with when they went back in time and readjusted. readjusted. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Shit. Could be one of the boats lifted from the ocean floor by Apocalypse and X Men Apocalypse, and then a multi mast wooden ship that might be the sunken Santa Maria that we saw in the void and Loki's. Bro, I thought that was from Pirates of the Caribbean. No, I... Yeah, I, I, know, I, I They had that too. I, I, look, I asked him, I was like, is that a Pirates of the Caribbean reference? And I was thinking that because of just because of Disney. And technically, because Pirates of the Caribbean is dead. Yeah. Season one, episode five. Then it's Circus Tent. And then in the further yeah, distance, another shot yeah, from the caravan right. rolls up. The Golden Gate Bridge, which is moved by Magneto in X Men The Last Stand. There's oh, also an yeah. orange oh. car that I'm trying to figure out. And a winged helmet that looks like it belonged to a variant of Thor. And just a reminder oh, that Elsewhere. Or Beta Ray Bill. Thor's frog variant, Throg. And a Thanos copter. A lot of weird stuff in the void, guys. Now the opening dongs of ACDC's Hell's Bells. That could have been Beta Ray Bill. Cause we we never experienced Beta Ray Bill. Ring out as Deadpool and Wolverine face each other down. We get a close up of Wolverine extending his claws, and I love how his gloves have these little adamantium sheaths on the knuckles, meaning the suit was designed for Logan by Beast or Charles or Scott or maybe even Forge, so that it would have adamantium sheaths just to keep his gloves on straight without his snickting claws messing anything up. Deadpool kick flips his ammo into his gun so that he catches in midair, and Wolverine crawls on all fours. It looks that so nice. Nice. Like that that nice. At one point, Wolverine does this combination of swipe, swipe, undercut, swipe, undercut, swipe, and Deadpool dodges them all, which is the same fight choreography that. Flash Thompson, Joe Manganiello, did with oh, Peter shit. Parker. Hey. Oh, shit, hey! Oh, that's cool. A voice calls out to them from a masked figure atop a lookout point, and it is the voice of Chris Evans. And Deadpool gets so excited, Chris Evans points to an approaching caravan led by the Fantastic <laughs> Car of the Fantastic Four, a version of which we saw in the 2007 Rise of the Silver Surfer movie, but this is more retro version. There's a V16 coupe, the car driven by Red Skull. And the also, question, just a question. Mm. Why are all the... So, Shorty, that y'all about to find out, I don't give... I, Still to this point, don't get why she was there, right? Um, except for like plot purposes. The fact that everyone here was a X Men villain was nuts. Yeah, that shit was crazy. Except for the few that were from like um like the other movies. First Captain America movie in 2011, but this one is patterned with Tony Stark's Ford Roadster flame pattern with an Iron Man hood ornament instead of the Hydro Ooh, logo. Ooh, I didn't even peek that. Hood ornament spot. Then the cupcake truck from the Moon Knight series, the one that Stephen Grant had to drive through the Alps. And then there's this larger tank pulled by several motorcycles, including a Hydra motorcycle from the first Cap film, and I think the motorcycle Steve Rogers That's drove in that film match. with the shotgun holster on the side. This tank vehicle has a magnet operated by the Canadarm. That's the attachment that originally paired with the NASA Columbia shuttle, and they fly a flag that's an Avengers logo with an Anarchy A spray painted over it. Among this crew is Tyler Mayne returning as Sabretooth. 
Sabretooth from the 2000 X-Men film, and Darth Maul actor Ray Park returning as Toad from the same film. Yeah. Sabretooth, yeah. remember, was hit by a redirected optic blast from Cyclops, directed by Jean Grey, and Toad was struck by lightning by Storm, and one of the weirdest lines yeah. in all of comic book movie history. Do you know what happens to a Toad when it's struck by lightning? The same thing that happens to everything else. And both Toad and Sabretooth ended up in the water. <laughs> and Stanford returns as Pyro, last seen in X2 and X2 the last stand. Hold on. Man, we, I'm weak. I'm weak, to, weak in the knees, man. It's I, bro. Weak in the I knees. promise you, I don't, I don't. It, it's, it's got, it's that white hair, bro. It's the hair, it's bro. It's the silver, bro. I, there was they a, got a wrestler that look like that right now, boy. It's the hair, bro. I think I know exactly who nah. you're talking about, bro. There was a girl I used to work with, bro. When I, when she first started, when she first came to the job, she had silver hair. I thought she was so fine. Once she got rid of something, I'm like, oh, you're mid as hell. It was the hair. <laughs> it was the hair, bro. <laughs> hey, ladies, that hair do a lot. It do bro. so much, I mean, much, fellas bro. too, but... That hair, bam, woo, man, woo. shit, bro. And both Toad and Sabretooth ended up in the water. Aaron Stanbird returns as Pyro, last seen in X2 and X-Men The Last Stand, who can manipulate fire but not create it himself. He was implied to have been vaporized by Jean Grey slash Phoenix in X-Men The Last Stand on Alcatraz, but in the Days of Future Past Rogue Cut, we see Pyro's Zippo lighter on a memorial, so it was implied that he actually survived those events and actually joined the X-Men in the future, fighting the Sentinels, but now he wears a faded red and yellow suit similar to his comics look. Chris yeah. Evans drops and sticks a superhero landing, remember which Deadpool coin in the 2016 Deadpool movie, but he lowers his hood, revealing a slightly DH face and the misdirect here is just so perfect. Chris Evans clothes under his rags show a hint of blue, but his arms are covered and his chest, so you don't see where any red would be or any logo. And the music starts to ramp up. No, 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 no. On the arms, on the arms, it was red and white. Yeah, it was it, like it, it could was, be Cap. Yeah, yeah I was that's, like, what? that's why I was like, what the fuck is he doing here? Yeah. Something that sounds like Alan Silvestri's Captain America theme or the Avengers theme, but it never quite gets there. And Deadpool thinks he's gonna say Avengers assemble, but Evans cuts him off and shouts Flame on. Yes, it's not Steve Rogers. It's Chris Evans' original Marvel role. Johnny Storm, the Human Torch, the blue suit is hell. a Fantastic Four yeah. suit from the 2005 and 2007 films. We actually broke those movies down here and here, just in case this we happened. Fantastic Four suit from the 2005 and 2007 yeah. films. We actually, day. Thank God damn! To this day. Woo! To this day. Damn! To this Jesus day. Christ! That's good milk, man! That's great milk! For nose, lips, eyes! eyes. The eyes! Good milk, right, man. man. Just, just, here here, just in case this ah, happened, man. Johnny flies over them as his flames cover his whole body. He looks as though he might start to try to do a four like he did in the final shot of the 2005 film. But Pyro, who only needs a flame source to manipulate fire, sucks out Johnny's flames and sends him crashing to the ground, pinging off the scaffolding like a plate of puck. The fact that you didn't know that was his, or you weren't thinking about the fact that that was his power. is Well, is I don't nuts. think, I, I never, me personally, I didn't think Pyro would be able to take all his heat. He, yeah, he, he sucked because that shit Because the out. thing, the pause. thing with the pause, <laughs> but the thing even is, even the him thing being with, able to manipulate it. Well, but you got to think the Human Torch can get up to the the heat of a sun. So he had most people believe Torch has like unlimited flame potential. So that sunned me for a loop in itself. Oh, yeah. A similar move that Marvel pulled by introducing John Krasinski, Reed Richards, Anson Mount, Black Bolt, and Haley Atwell, Captain Carter, just to do this to them moments later. Oh. Sabretooth oh. steps forward to fight Wolverine, but it's over quickly. Sabretooth is beheaded. Deadpool raises his head and says, Behold your queen! Carry on, <laughs> <laughs> down. It's like Mad like Max IP infringement. They snare them with the magnet and trap them in cages to take them to see Cassandra. Now, as they head there, on the hillside are a few narvas, aka void turkeys, the flightless birds with metallic indigo plumage and purple floating ball heads, which we saw in Loki season one, episode five, which I believe was named after the daughter of one of the art directors or production designers. Then the caravan now passes the Great Pyramids of Giza, which we all... Please, please be X-Men Apocalypse. Also saw in the void of the TBA, along with the Sphinx that still had its nose with the face of Kang. In the Fantastic Four comics, Pharaoh okay. Ramatut, huh? before he was known to be a Kang, yeah, yeah, yeah. used the Sphinx as his time shuttle. There is a second cage that's being dragged by this caravan that looks like it's holding a TBA hunter. Now in trailer footage, there is a cuffed TBA agent who gets snatched up by Elias, and I'm pretty sure based on BTS footage shown in Welcome to Wrexham that that character would have been Rob McElhinney's cameo as a TBA agent, but it seems that they cut this from the movie, which is a pretty hilarious troll by Ryan Reynolds. Johnny describes the void to them, saying Reed called it a metaphysical junkyard where anything useless goes before it gets annihilated forever. This tells us that Yoan Griffith's Reed Richards also got sent to this void too, but did not make it. Johnny mentioned Eliath, and Deadpool says, ooh, Eliath is in this thing from Loki season one, episode five? Hey, come on, that's my job, Deadpool. They drive past <gasps> what looks like the Brooklyn Bridge as well, and then they arrive to Cassandra's compound, contained within the corpse of giant man Scott Lang. Huh. All right, finely aged. The skeletal remains in his giant man was a bleak Jesus. visual from the old man Logan comics, but in that yeah. instance, it was Hank Pym. Now it's Scott Lang. It is possible that this giant Scott was that redundant giant Scott in the background of the Battle of Earth and Avengers Endgame when we saw him shoving a Leviathan through a portal at the same time that Scott was actually normal size with Hope in the Ant Van. We should also remember that in the mm -hmm. Void in Loki Season 1, Episode 5, <laughs> there was a giant helmet of Yellow Jacket. So I don't know, this could also mm -hmm. be a giant Scott from a fight with a giant Darren. The hands of giant Scott open, and inside, several other cameos from past Marvel movies form Cassandra's gang. Lady Deathstrike from X2. She yeah. 
yep. with another yep. one, Colonel Striker's right. experiments, who will plot. Jason Fleming returns as a teleporter yep. as Zazel from X-Men First Class. He was in the Hellfire Club with Sebastian Shaw, played by Kevin Bacon. Yeah, Juggernaut was for X-Men no reason. Right. He, was just back and forth. <laughs> he was in the, he was on the front lines right. and just, just teleported, teleported to the left. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what the hell you move for? Yeah, that nigga ain't even start running yet, right? Zazel, Zazel ass comparable to Nightwing, fucking Nightcrawler. Yeah. Tattooed Callisto, a member of the mutant group The Omegas that was allied with Magneto. Now this bald guy with the goatee and the black leather trench coat who we saw in the trailers is actually a variant of Bullseye. His goatee and clothes are exactly like Colin Farrell's in the 2003 Daredevil film, and he has a subtle crosshair scar on his forehead, and during the battle you see him flinging knives. There's also the Punisher villain, the Russian, who is played by Kevin Nash in the 2004 Punisher film, but has also been in the past There's also a version of Psylocke in this game, who's played by Olivia Munn in X-Men Apocalypse. We later see her with her whip made from psionic energy. The skull opens and a bald figure rolls up in a wheelchair, and Deadpool thinks it's Charles. But instead, it is Cassandra Nova, played by Emma Corrin, who played young Diana Spencer in seasons three and four in The Crown. So Cassandra Nova was introduced in Grant Morrison's well, 2001 Ace for Station X-Men comics as what's called a Moomadry, a cosmic shadow spirit to Charles Xavier, who ended up taking physical form due to Charles' abilities and joined him in the womb, battling him. That's why she says that they're twins. But she survived this battle and got revenge on the X-Men by unleashing a wild sentinel. Yeah, the, she was the only character I had no idea who she was. Because uh, I've, I've never heard of her. This was something new to me too. Yeah. She, 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 I, the only reason I heard of her is because I watched the Everything You Need to Know video. Oh, yeah, before was, going. Yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've never heard of her. 97, but it was orchestrated by Bastion. Cassandra later says the TVA sent her to the void before she could walk, so they must have pruned her there as a baby, maybe even to avert a multiversal Genosha massacre. Deadpool calls her entrance ableist, and yes, it is similar to Willie Austin pretending to be a king, but then springing into that performative role. Cassandra says that they've been trying to catch that firefly of Johnny Storm for years, and Deadpool quotes word for word the string of insults that he says Johnny says about her when he called her a megalomaniacal, egotistical, psychotic asshole, a finger licking dead inside pixie slab of third rate dime store nut milk, and she can lick my goddamn cinnamon ring cling and kick rocks all the way to bald hell. And I like how Johnny stands. Here like, because oh we find out in the post scene that he did say all of that word for word, and Cassandra Nova rips the flesh from his bones. Yo, and he claps. That, that shit was brutal. Great. Yuck, Deadpool brutal. Whips. That, that bro. Price, not brutal. That shit was bro. crazy. Brutal. And like when he blinked, his skin was off, and he did the. And the, I was like, oh the, shit. What, what got me is when they stabbed. Like we all could see how strong she was, but when they came in and established that she was an Omega level mutant, I say, oh. Boy, they better than me. Because what I know of Omega Level Mutants, I'm not swinging. And that boy will ring. Ah! Got, just, she put that nigga in the ground. And, like, yeah. How did he get out? He dug his he way dug, out. Yeah, I think he dug it. Oh, he dug it. Because he came out. from yeah, under yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was we got 20, nigga 20 head, minutes like, left in the video. Yeah. Uh, the three, uh, but it's on 1.25 speed. And of the three, obviously Chris Hemsworth, Thor, would be his favorite. Deadpool also defends that Chris Evans was totally draining the budget of this movie, as he probably would have been like the biggest cameo other than Henry Cavill. Wade says that killing Wolverine will sink the second act of The Music Man, referencing Hugh Jackman's recent role yep. in the revival of The Music Man. Cassandra says that while Charles could invade people's minds with a thought, she has to get her hands dirty. And she shoves her extra long fingernails. That was creepy, bro. Yeah. When she was all in, all oh, the, all the, all the, all in, all in the skull. I was moving. Yeah. Oh, that shit was, Cassandra uh, alters the memory to make Vanessa say, you'll never fucking matter. And in doing so, you could argue she incepts this concept in Wade's mind. It's something hard for him to shake for the rest of the film. Cassandra leaves to feed Deadpool and Wolverine to Elias, but they grab the jet thruster leg, what looks like the Iron Man of suit from the first Iron Man film that Obadiah Stane was inside of. That leg actually looked like it was icy and frozen over. So this could have been from when Tony Stark led Obadiah Stane high up into the atmosphere and triggered that icing problem. Uh, but here, maybe Obadiah just kept floating and floating into space and kept icing over. And they use it to fly away from the compound. Deadpool and Wolverine. You know, at first, I, I, I didn't think that was uh, Obadiah's. I, I thought it was a. Uh, I, I don't uh, know whose leg that was. I thought it was um what are they called not master mode um oh my god i can't believe i'm blanking right now the giant robots sentinel i thought it was a sentinel at first Mm. Diner, and they use this time to get to know each other. What made you finally wear an honest to God costume? Mine's red, so they can't see me bleed. But I could see how yellow would be useful too. Deadpool tells Logan that he wanted you to be an Avenger. He responds, <laughs> "The Avengers," which could tell us that in <laughs> his universe there must have been an Avengers alongside the X Men. Dogpool runs up to them. Dogpool, aka Mary Puffins, is played by Peggy, a crossbreed between a pug and a Chinese crested dog, also known as a Puggies, <sighs> who won Britain's ugliest dog in 2023. Following her yeah. is Nicepool, played by a handsomer, nice younger Ryan Reynolds, that and no boy, scarring, that and a man bun. Hey. And definitely more of a Canadian accent based on the way he says sorry. 
Henry. Nice. Bull says, wait till you meet Lady Pole. She just had a baby and you can't even notice, which is another reference to Reynolds' wife, Blake Lively, who just gave birth to another baby in February 2023. Deadpool introduces oh. Logan, saying he's usually shirtless, but he let himself go since the divorce, which might be the oh. most brutal line of the movie because Hugh Jackman was married to Deborah Lee Furness from 1996 oh. to oh. September 2023. It just happened. Like they oh, almost damn. made it from since before Hugh Jackman was famous. So you really thought they were going to go the distance. And this would have happened while Hugh Jackman was shooting this movie. So yikes. Damn. Nice Bull lets them borrow his Honda Odyssey that he names Betsy with a coexist bumper sticker. And in this cornfield region, they walk past a ship called the Conquistador, which might be a boat from the 2006 X-Men Volume 2 number 189 that was used by the Children of the Vault when the X-Men were trying to stop the Hecatomb, a Shi'ar weapon of mass destruction. Now they listen to I'm With You by Avril Lavigne, oh, a shit. fellow Canadian. Bro, they drive past how them. big is the team on this channel? Because like, how you see the boat and be like, that's from something. <laughs> and you go find a fucking boat. Hey, man. From... I don't know. I don't know. These niggas are. That look like the ship from fucking, um. Oh, uh, what was it? Infinity War? Not Infinity War. Uh, the spaceship they was on. Remember the little ring ship? From what? It was, uh. Um, oh, I can't think of it. I feel like I know what you're talking about, but I can't um, really put. Now, Infinity War? Somebody said yes, Infinity War. Okay. Was it Infinity? Crashed two oh. ships that were used by Thanos' Black Order in Avengers Infinity oh. War. Oh, there, 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 there we go. Yellow and blue suit asking if his X-Men made him wear it, saying, friends don't let friends leave the house looking like they fight crime for the Los Angeles Rams. But that, that was, that was good. Colors. Deadpool touches a nerve, though, and he starts thwipping like Spider-Man. And Wolverine pulls over when he realizes Deadpool can't for sure fix his world, and Wade defends that he made an educated wish, a term that I'm going to start using next time I theorize that Taylor Swift is going to yep. show up in a movie. Deadpool shows Wolverine his Polaroid of the nine most important people in his life, a token that he uses similar to Marty McFly's family photo in Back to the Future. I think this might stir in Wolverine the nine most important people in his life, as there probably would have been nine or so X-Men who were the most important yeah. to him. Gene, Charles, Scott, Rogue, Beast, Storm, mm. Gambit, and let's say Morph, with Wolverine yeah. himself being the ninth. I think there might be something to that number nine, because in the 2017 Logan film, there were reported seven X-Men who died in the Westchester incident, and that might have been in addition to Logan and Charles. Logan rips Wade a new one, saying he couldn't even keep a relationship alive with the stripper, and that he's going to die alone. And Logan also mentions that he's been alive he for said, over 200 years, which is funny, <laughs> that he was in 1832, which would mean that Deadpool might have found this Wolverine in that bar in the year 2032 of that timeline. I think they just gave him some extra room beyond the present day so they could imply that the X-Men of that universe died of some advanced sentinel weaponry controlled by the Friends of Humanity. They fight again. Logan slams Deadpool's head in the radio, similar to Wade and the Mercenary slamming heads on the radio in the 2016 movie and changing the stations that way. But briefly, we hear the opening vocals of This is the Greatest Show from Hugh Jackman's movie, The Greatest Showman. Ah! But the radio stands <laughs> on that they want from Greece. Sean Levy said in interviews that he wanted each Wolverine versus Deadpool fight to evolve throughout the movie. So while the first fight was in the wide outdoors, this one is in close right. quarters in the Honda Odyssey. We stay on that coexist Great bumper, fight. getting bloodier and bloodier as they fight long into the night until Wolverine is Deadpool wrapped up in seatbelts and they're both out oh, of the series. He whooped this thing all day. night. I mean, day. And into the night is Into crazy. the night. I mean, Aaron was, I mean, y'all know this, but he felt, both of them felt every stab, every punch. Ugh, ugh, all day is Bro, insane. It was so bad, they both fell asleep for several yeah. hours. Yeah. Like, they didn't even feel sure to get <laughs> in the car. Right, they ain't feel they saw get kidnapped. This figure drives them to this home. Inside this home, well, I was we like, see the bitch statue of the Scarlet Witch that we saw I in, was the right. in Multiverse of Madness, meaning that at some point, there was a Wanda down here, I think. Or maybe even that's where she got banished when we saw that glow of red. And she could still be alive. She could still come back. I know she can. There's a chest set that makes. Yeah, unfortunately, you can't kill Wanda. Wanda still exists somewhere in the multiverse. You you can't. Kill you think her. so? I know her. I know so. Because you got to think about it. She literally transported her mind into another version of herself and took over that version in another dimension. Mm. In another dimension. Wanda is. You can't kill Wanda. That's She's literally. True. She at this point she's the strongest. She is the strongest. Is she Omega level. Yeah. Maybe he belonged to a Charles Xavier at some point before he died. And then this bed is a giant jawbone of the bed used by Hulk on Sakaar in Thor Ragnarok. And Ooh, one of the occupants enter so. Electra Nachios with Jennifer Gar wielding the size once again, returning to the 2003 Daredevil and 2005 spin off Electra. Next, oh and I can't believe they got him in this movie, Blade. Wesley Frickin Snipes, the half vampire, vampire hunter. Well, well, the well, he, did, he did phenomenal, too. I, I was like, he was retired. <laughs> 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 Oh, I'm gonna have to, you know, put a uh, just in case, just in case, just in case. But uh, when he was walking in, I'm like, please don't let his lines be corny. Like, please don't let his acting slash lines just be. But he nailed. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. One of them lines, one of them lines was terrible. Like they they snowboarding on the button. What? 
Yeah, I know what you're talking about. That has, like, what? That has to be. What? That has to be something. That that has, it has to, to be, be a reference, like an Easter egg. Yeah. But when he said it, I was like, what? That man <laughs> said he's going to be the only player. Actually, that first Blade in 98, was, like, okay. 98 was the first truly successful Marvel film, and without it, studios likely would not have committed to proper budgets for X Men, Spider Man, and the MCU thereafter. The third movie of that trilogy, Blade Trinity, is also where Ryan Reynolds got his start in Marvel films, as Hannibal and he and Wesley Snipes reportedly did not enjoy working together. There's actually a reference to that here, where Deadpool says, "I thought you were retired." And Blade says an R word that's offensive, especially to audiences <laughs> since 2004. And then he tells Deadpool, I don't like you. And Deadpool says, never did. I like that they can at least bury the hatchet for this movie. We see a glowing playing card of Gambit, Remy LeBeau, played by... <laughs> <laughs> I came out of my daddy ball fast, and I came out of my mama, my mama uh, Gucci fast. So I'm just, I come fast. Oh, I'm gonna make a name for myself. <laughs> Tatum, and it's so Tatum. Louisiana born mutant Gambit was played by Taylor Kitsch in X-Men Origins. And years later, there was a Gambit solo movie in the works with Channing yeah. Tatum attached to play the role, but it never yeah. made it out of development hell. So yeah. the costume for Gambit here is a live action version of the purple suit and headband closer to the comics through the X-Men animated series in the 90s, or like Marvel vs. Capcom. Deadpool says that he looks like a superhero version of Hawkeye. <laughs> <laughs> now they say there's a fourth member of the group and Deadpool asks if it's Magneto, but they reveal Magneto is dead. And Deadpool says, now they get cheap? It's like Disney shoved Pinocchio's face in my ass started lying. Interesting that he says this wow. because in the days before the release, Marvel's executive producer attached to this project, Wendy Jacobson, revealed that they intentionally released some false rumors to throw fans off. And a couple weeks before the release, some outlets and scoopers reported that Patrick Stewart was going to appear in this movie. Their fourth member, though, is X-23, Laura Daphne Keene, who also lied while on a press tour for the Acolyte, saying that she would she not should be have more action Remy sets. says that every past resistance member who went up against Cassandra died, including the Punisher, Quicksilver, and Daredevil. And Dimple says, oh, Daredevil, I'm so sorry. And Electra just says coldly, it's fine. Which is another reference to these actors' real-life relationships and divorces, because Jennifer uh. and Ben Affleck met on the set of the 2003 uh, Daredevil, yeah. and after Ben Affleck broke it off with Jennifer Lopez, he and Jennifer Garner were married from 2005 onward, but then ran into relationship trouble 10 years later in 2015 and finalized a divorce in 2018. And then after that, Ben Affleck got back together with J-Lo. And is miserable. And is utterly miserable. Sometimes you, it ain't worth spinning a block, to it. Ain't so, so Especially ain't. Jenny on the block. <laughs> orange Damn. pop, orange she drink. You got you drinking an orange drink, Sula? Get the fuck out of here. I was like, what the fuck? What the fuck? What she said? How old it was? Uh, I was like, this bitch really wasn't on the block for Honey, ham, and cheese with an orange drink. Oh, that was stupid shit. I said, oh, man, get the fuck out of oh, here, bro. Geez. Mary I was like, once I learned she didn't sing her own shit, all with Aaron completely man. miserable. Quicksilver See? presumably would have been Evan Peters, since Aaron Taylor Johnson's Quicksilver died in Avengers Age of Ultron, whereas Evan Peters' version just kind of petered out in Dark Phoenix. Since Magneto Damn. is dead and Cassandra melted his helmet, they plan to use Juggernaut's dome, which Juggernaut, Kane Marco, stepbrother to Charles Xavier in the comics, would wear to keep Charles out of his mind. So presumably it would block Cassandra's psionic energy as well. Wolverine confesses to Laura that his X-Men begged him to wear that suit, but one day when he was away from their mansion drinking, a group of humans arrived to go mutant hunting. And he never specified what that group was. It could have been the Friends of Humanity, the FOH, with like power dampening weapons and maybe sentinel backup from OZT, Bastion, Operation Zero Tolerance. But Wolverine continues to wear this suit, he says, to remember his family. And he tells Laura, Whoever you think I am, you got the wrong guy. You were always the wrong guy. Till you weren't. So on their way back to the compound, they pass a golden palace of I Asgard, see. pruned there. There's also what looks like a crashed Guardians of the Galaxy ship, the Milano. Yeah. They talk about the Punisher, and Deadpool asks which Punisher. There have been like five of them. There have actually been four big ones. There's Dolph Lundgren, there's Thomas Jane, there's yeah. the late Ray Stevenson, and then there's John Bernthal. But it probably wouldn't have been the Bernthal one in their group because he's returning to play Frank Castle in Daredevil Born Again. But Blade says yeah. there's only been one Blade and there's only gonna be oh, so one. We are getting which another. I think was really no, a joke good. at I'm Blade's sure expense I'm because in addition to the MCU Marshall Ali Blade in the works, there was the Kirk Sticky Fingers Jones Blade TV series on Spike in 2006. But that shit was terrible. Nobody counts that. Right now, it kind of sounds like Wesley Snipes is getting the last laugh because. Oh. The MCU Mahershala Ali Blade movie keeps getting delayed with a revolving door of directors and screenwriters. They. Oh, uh, well, see, I mean. I think the issue with that is Wesley Snipes. Huh? I think Wesley, if I remember, Wesley owns a portion of, of, Blade, of Blade. the Blade IP. I'm a smart if man. I, if I remember correctly. Smart man. If I remember correctly. But also on top of that, bro. Just bring him back in the film as he's passing on the mantle of Blade. Yeah, Loki. There could be more than one day. Man, he obviously can still do something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah clearly. You just got to right right back into the directors. compound and Wolverine joins Riders. them. Laura puts on her sunglasses that she got at the gas station yep. Logan. Yep. I love that she always kept these. A melee erupts. It's so cool. Blade kills Lady Deathstrike. Wolverine and Deadpool make it up to Cassandra's room in the skull. Meanwhile, Blade says some other, other, other still trying to ice skate uphill, which is a callback to yeah. that great line from the 1998 Blade oh. film. Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate uphill. Actually, this line came from Snipes' mind itself. When he was discussing Deacon Frost with the Blade filmmakers, he described the character as a kind of guy who would ice skate uphill. And they loved that line so much that they worked it into the film. And we have to be honest that okay. that is the kind of what the f are you talking about energy okay. that's nice brought to the role 
Okay. See when now he said it, it. When he it. said it, it's kind of like uh, he's like you know how they say punctuation is important. Yeah. He said it in a weird way that it's like first of all it's it's still a weird line but like the way he said it I didn't it was, I yeah. didn't know he was saying some motherfuckers are trying to ice skate uphill. Yeah. It didn't sound like that. Yeah. I, but hey, I get it. Uh, well, uh, they said it's getting delayed. It's so. getting delayed. I can't wait for that blade game though. No. Oh yeah. My God. Oh, and I think that is the same kind of just trust me ego that Ryan Reynolds carried into his take on Deadpool. Cassandra toys with Wolverine as Blade kills Toad and Gambit kills the Russian and Laura severs Juggernaut's legs at the ankle. Oh, also, oh. Also, 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 also. Who was the vampire Blade kill? Because Blade threw his weapon at somebody and they caught, they burst into flames like a vampire. There was one and it, 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 it stuck out. I was like, there's another vampire here? I don't know. Ooh, she brings gotta... her backpack containing Juggernaut's dome helmet up to Deadpool. Cassandra has taken Logan into what I assume is an astral plane with a row of gravestones and distant screams. Presumably the X-Men the day the humans came to the mansion when he was away. Cassandra, who chooses to stay in the void to, to rule her own little kingdom, tells Logan that he can escape his pain by staying with her and she can silence all the voices. And in that moment, the screams cut out, but not because of Cassandra, but because in this moment, Deadpool has placed Juggernaut's helmet on her head. Cassandra says that she's gonna boil their brains on an atomic level while pleasuring herself, only she didn't use the term pleasure in herself, to the Enya box set. And Deadpool gasps, there's a box set? Because Deadpool was a big fan of Enya in Deadpool 2. Her songs Caribbean Blue and Only Time were featured in that film. Pyro, who was working a side deal with Paradox, shoots Cassandra and begins to make a speech, but Wolverine cuts him off saying, not everyone gets to make a speech. Wolverine appeals to I his Cassandra's that. mutual yeah. connection to Charles. That. And he says Charles would have never stopped trying to bring her home if he knew about her. So when they take off the dome, Cassandra rewards them, saying an amateur magician came through the void and she wore his skin around for four days, referring, of course, to Doctor Strange. And remember, in that initial void shot in Loki season one, episode five, was there was a the Sanctum Sanctorum over on the left side of the screen. Mm. That's probably how Strange got there. Oh. She produces a sling ring which if you look real closely, has a piece of the time stone and the reality stone on either side. Sling rings normally open portals in geographical space within a single universe. Though when Mordo first introduced them in the 2016 Doctor Strange film, he said that they were used to travel the multiverse, but this sling ring must allow the wielders to travel not just through space, but across realities and through time. So Cassandra uses to songs. open a portal yeah. and they run in slow motion. We hear Jimmy Durante's I'll be seeing you. As the other Marvel heroes look up in pride, they leap into the portal and cross the threshold right as a life was about to devour them. They drop down into the drive max parking lot of 10005. <laughs> <laughs> damn straight it is. Disney brought him back. They're going to make him do this till he's 90. What is worth keeping back? Marvel can totally make him keep coming back for the next 35 years. Cassandra figures out that Pyro was working with Paradox and she confronts Paradox by the TVA outpost and subway station. Oh, she's oh, to discover the Time Ripper and decides oh. she wants to use the Time Ripper to destroy every universe until everything is in the void with her where she can play God. She flings Wolverine and Deadpool down the street into this store. This is Liefeld's Just Feet, Orthopedic Solutions, a reference to comics writer and artist Rob Liefeld, co creator of the Deadpool character, who over the years became known for underdrawing characters' feet. Also, for drawing characters with such insane. Same bulky proportions Damn, that they that the feet. Feet. A portal brings in all the other Deadpools, starting with Mary Puppins, followed by Nice Pool. Wade tells the dog to choose between original recipe or Van Wilder, referring to Reynolds' 2002 raunchy comedy. And Nice Pool laughs and says, I can gently tap on the fourth wall too. And he simply just turns to the audience to say the proposal and turns back. And of course, while Prime Deadpool is <laughs> using that? raunchy comedy as a reference, I like how Nice Pool is like, you know what? Let's choose a fun rom com with Sandy Bullock. But following these two is the rest of the Deadpool core that Nice Pool warned about earlier. He says that there are a total of 100 of them. The ones featured prominently are Lady Deadpool or Lady Pool, never unmasked, but voiced by Blake Lively. In the comics, Wanda Wilson is from Earth 3010. There's Headpool, a severed Deadpool head, who in the comics comes That's from Earth 2149, insane. the Marvel Zombies right. universe, where he's infected from a bite by the Silver Surfer. This version of Headpool has buck teeth and wears a helicopter rotor from a straight <laughs> old-timey leather football helmet. Slime. Headpool is actually voiced by Nathan Fillion. There's Kidpool from Earth 10330, a misfit from Xavier's school who steals two lightsaber-like swords from the Danger Room, but I think this is a different Kidpool. There's Cowboy Deadpool, aka the Deadpool Kid from Earth 1108. He's also part of the Deadpool in the comics, he's wanted for bank robbery, arson, software piracy, and stampeding Damn. baby goats through an orphanage. Damn. Here, Cowboy Deadpool is voiced by Matthew McConaughey. And just to run <laughs> several more, there's Baby Pool and a Deadpool wearing a red, white, and green Wrexham AFC Thanks. colored armor with the dragon logo. Kid Pool is actually voiced by Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively's daughter, Inez Reynolds. And Baby oh. Pool is played by their youngest child who was born in 2023 that we mentioned earlier, Olin Reynolds. They there's also a female the Deadpool baby. 2099, <laughs> Warda Wilson from Earth 16356. There's also. Does that mean the 2099 universe exists within Marvel? That might not be a big thing for you two. Let me break it down. Okay. That means that Miles Morales can exist as well as everything that happened. Oh, my motherfucking God. Oh, my fucking God. Oh, my fucking God. Oh, my fucking God. You're... You're right. He's right. That's right. 
Hope they do something with it. Oh my. That opens the door for a lot of shit. Because that means Miguel O'Hara exists in a space. Oh my fucking God, dude. Mm -hmm. They've created some some shit. <laughs> they created Deadpool. some shit. There's Zenpool, who's a pacifist Deadpool from the Avengers vs. X-Men 2014 crossover comic event. There's also a samurai Deadpool. There's a Scottish Deadpool with a kilt. And I think this one might be my favorite, a Deadpool dressed like a circus master of ceremonies, like Hugh Jackman's P.T. Barnum costume from The Greatest Showman. Now, there was also a dance pool in the credits played by a professional dancer, Nick Pauly, but I think he actually might have been the dance double doing the in-sync choreography in the opening sequence, because I don't know if Ryan Reynolds is that good at dancing. So our Deadpool, Deadpool Prime, asks the others that they can just be done with the multiverse, saying it's just been miss after miss after miss and that the Wizard of Oz originally did it the best. Now, I totally get multiverse fatigue, but miss after miss after miss? I mean, Loki, what if in Spider-Man No Way Home were all very well received multiverse stories? Multiverse of Madness, maybe mixed, but Marvel fans wanted more multiverse from that movie, not less. Multiverse of Madness was bullshit. Yeah. It, Everything. Was it was bullshit. Bullshit? It was bullshit. The yeah. ending, oh my god. Oh, oh, third eyes! <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see that, that latest Tomorrow's Teaching video? Mm -hmm. It's bad. Oh, okay. All right. Tomorrow's yeah, Teaching tomorrow, right? one best picture. The animated Spider-Verse films are beloved. So I'm wondering what Ryan Reynolds is referring to. The Flash by The Wizard of Oz? Does Reynolds think that any dream reality movie counts as multiverse? Or do we think Reynolds knows that some critics are going to say his movie here is not as good as those other examples and he's just trying to get ahead of it? I just think that Deadpool is trying to get a rise out of these Deadpool core members to get them Deadpool to open fire all at once as he uses Nicepool as a human shield. But Nicepool does not have healing <laughs> powers. You really are. That was hilarious. Aren't you? <laughs> the answer is yes. This is a callback to the opening credits of the 2016 Deadpool film where instead of starring Ryan Reynolds, it says starring God's perfect idiot. Deadpool gets Nicepool's gold plated Deadpool. Desert Eagles, and he and Wolverine march oh. out to face hey, shit. That when nigga ain't that, shit. He used them for a little bit and threw them bitches away. That okay, but when he was holding nice pool as a shield, I could not stop laughing. It, it, I it, swear it, to it, God, it, it, that shit was. He's, why we stopped? <laughs> Say you're dead weight. <laughs> Like be no way I'm paralyzed. Yeah, I'm fucking paralyzed, nigga. That was hilarious. Like a prayer. The trailer shot always stopped before we got to this part, but now finally Wolverine pulls on his mask from behind his cowl. The mask comes on right as Madonna sings, and it feels like home. And hell yeah, it does. In an incredible long take brawl, Wolverine and Deadpool just slash through these 100 Deadpools. Deadpool's first move, I love, is to just pose on the lamp post, kind of like a pole dancer. They kill a bunch of Deadpools on a city bus. That on the side is an ad for Stanley Steamer. Stan Lee was born in 1922. And then on the back of the bus is another ad, Raimondo Marvelous Morning Soup, which I, I think could be a tribute to Raymond Ray Chan, a longtime Marvel art director who passed away in April of this year. And he actually gets a wonderful tribute in the credits right above this movie being dedicated to Henry Delaney, Rob Delaney's son, who tragically passed away in 2018. But the Deadpools all regenerate and Shogun Deadpool has baby arms, kind of like Deadpool's baby hand in the first movie and baby legs. <laughs> and the in the second movie. Peter arrives wearing Deadpool's suit from his locker. Bro, can we, yeah. why was his nuts? That was his no. dick. No, that his was... nuts was out, but his dick was tucked in his belt. You know how, you know how they say you get a boner and you put it in your... <laughs> you talking about when he just unchecked, his, unturned his legs? When he got off the bike and he got off the bike and he was his standing there. No, 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 lady and gentlemen. I'm talking about Deadpool with many legs. I could have swore I just saw balls on the screen. Oh, 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 I don't, oh, I don't. full screen real quick. We are full screen. Hello. And in the first movie, and baby legs when he's healing in the second movie. Wait. <laughs> Wait, is that balls? That's a. That's a. Yeah. Oh! oh my God! 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 Oh my
I just thought that earlier when he showed it. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, we had 107. Wait, wait, wait. When they walked up, I was like, damn. Wait, wait. Damn. 107. All right, we had 107. Because oh, I was I'm looking at the suit to see what was different, so I'm looking at her and this all I got to the middle. I was like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> shit, dude. Damn, dude, it was this damn. far? Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because he don't, he don't beat him to after that. First Wolverine, Void Easter eggs. Okay, back. okay, all these Easter eggs. Was it after? Yeah, it's after this, it's after, after the Human Torch. It should say. Uh, oh, it was later in the video. Escape yeah, right, right there. there. There it is. So we have it is the most we're playing. That's it. Oh, God. I was like, Jesus. 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 Unblur, you can see it, right? With him, it's just enough to win these Deadpools over because they all independently love their Peter. Well, why? Yeah, okay. So as he was walking, me and Simba both like, damn, yeah, that's right? his nuts. That's his nuts. And that's then I saw that you can see the print shoot up and you that's the tip poking out the top of the belt. <laughs> How you the bitch that you can see it. How you bitch? I'm so big that's, a, that's what I was saying oh. a minute ago. Yo. <laughs> Oh Jeez, my god. It. I think that's what B15 is ogling later. Cassandra connects to oh! the oh! Oh, 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 that's why she said you look good in that suit. She was looking at it. Oh, <laughs> oh my <laughs> dick. And him saying that Wade and Logan are with him, it's just enough to win these Deadpools over because they all independently love their Peter. And yes, hard package pool. is massive. I think that's what B15 is ogling later. Cassandra connects to the Time Ripper and it begins to spaghettify this reality. The VFX looking just as it did in Loki season two. Paradox yeah. explains that the Time Ripper is fed by twin beams, a matter and antimatter that if physically connected by a circuit would disrupt the Time Ripper, but <laughs> annihilate whoever was that circuit. Wolverine tries to make the sacrifice play, but Deadpool takes his place, referencing Spock by putting his hand on the glass in a kind of salute. Yeah. Deadpool says that he's not doing this because he needs it, but because they need him to. Echoing what Happy Hogan told him being an Avenger was all about. I waited a long time for this team up. But since Deadpool can't reach the other beam, Wolverine has to break in, grab his hand, and connect to the other beam. Wolverine's top shreds off, revealing a shredded torso. No, no, just say, say. Say. Words like wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> like what's happening here. At the midnight hour, I can wait, wait. the children's choir. Ain't this the song you wanted to know? The, the, that was playing during this? Who, me? One of y'all wanted to know this song. Mm. And has to break in, grab his hand, and connect to the other beam. Wolverine's top shreds off, revealing a shredded torso. The children's choir cover sings the words like a prayer, which perfectly reflect what's no, happening. No, it was at the midnight hour. I can feel your power, just like a prayer. I know you'll take me there. Logan and Wade validate each other as the best Wolverine, and in turn, a true X Man. Cassandra is obliterated. The Time Ripper is destroyed, and it seems like Deadpool and Wolverine are wiped out. B15 arrives. Wounding Masaku returning from Loki, and looks like she's been promoted to a judge status. But Paradox tries to lie about what really happened. But Deadpool and Wolverine return, oh. still alive. Deadpool <laughs> explains that if only one of them tried to hold the beams together, they would have died. But both them together, listening to Madonna, be plot armor. Personally, I think they were spared <laughs> by God of Stories Loki, who was moved by their sacrifices. But his sacrifice looked a lot cooler, let's be honest. Paradox is arrested, and B-15 says, I want to show you something huge. Deadpool responds to the saying, that's what Scoutmaster Kevin used to say. Wade brought up Scoutmaster yes. Kevin in Deadpool 2. Well, like Scoutmaster Kevin used to say, there's a first time for everything, son. And I think Ryan oh Reynolds named him oh Kevin after Kevin Feige. B-15 says that they saved their timeline from extinction, and says that there's a lot of work to do, which I think could be a clue, setting Universe 1005 on a collision course with 616 in a future Avengers vs. X-Men. And so, in the yes. collision, and the collision with six one six and one zero zero five, that also could lead to the explanation for Avengers, uh, a Doomsday, because Doom recreates a world from all the pieces of all the universe beginning to clash on the on to each other. Ooh, okay. Mm. Damn. B15 promises she'll see what she can do about bringing Laura, Electra, Gambit, and Blade home. So the fact that Laura shows up at the party suggests that Electra's back home in some Daredevil universe, Blade is back home in his universe, and Gambit is who the hell knows where. Deadpool and Logan get shawarma. <laughs> <laughs> was that a magic mic? Yes, yes, it was. <laughs> Ending the battle in New York in the 2012 Avengers film, Deadpool says, you know the Avengers discovered yeah. shawarma, which is just such a funny line because like I think a lot of people didn't even know what shawarma was until they saw it in Avengers. Wade brings Dogpool and Logan home to meet Blind Al. As we're hearing Aretha Franklin's You're All I Need to Get By, I love the song so much. We end the film at the party with 
Wade's nine most important people with a few more. Laura, Logan, and Dogpool. And while Vanessa and Wade aren't back together yet, they do share a look. The final shot has Deadpool and Wolverine's mask side by side on top of, what's that? A box of Feige's famous pizza. The same pizza that Wade was eating in the chronologically earliest scene in the 2016 Deadpool film. Green Day's Good Riddance plays over the credits, showing outtakes from all of Fox's Marvel productions, both ones that had characters featured in this film and ones that didn't. I love this. It's kind of like how movies from the 90s and the aughts used to end by showing outtakes and just playing some great, wistful, late 90s punk music. And in addition to the post credit scene, which I talked about in another video, these credits do end, including not just the Marvel Studios logo, but the 20th Century Fox logo. Oh, and I love this little touch because as these studios gobble right. each other up with acquisitions, as a movie lover, I just kind of have a weird soft spot for studio logos on old titles that I love. And I always get bummed when I see the post Disney buyout version of the Fox logo where they removed the word Fox. That 20th Century Fox fanfare music was composed by Alfred Newman, the legendary composer and head of a dynasty of great Hollywood composers and musicians, yeah. including David Newman, Thomas Newman, and Maria Newman, and Alfred's nephew, Randy Newman. And before we say goodbye to the 20th Century <laughs> Fox logo, <laughs> I just want to end with that fun little bit of film industry trivia because it means right. a lot to me. Thank you so much to all of you for watching, and thank you to our editors who work their butts off to keep this breakdown out to you on release day. Comment down below with your favorite part of this movie. Follow me at EA Voss. Subscribe to all three channels in the New Rockstars Network for breakdowns and news coverage of everything you love. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Great video. Hey. Just listen to what he says. So forever, I just wanted to end with that fun little bit of film industry trivia because it means a lot to me. Thank you okay. so much to all of you okay. for watching, and thank you to our editors who worked their butts off to get this breakdown out to you on release day. Comment down below with your favorite part of the. On oh, they have. They had that early on release day and found all of these details by release day. They oh, they plugged in. They plugged, plugged. in. Plugged. 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 plugged.